His name is Shen Yu, and he is 23 years old. Just a difficult otaku who recently dropped out of school to get an internship. He says it's an internship, when in fact it's a part-time job at a cafe. They close their place every time to escape. Do they think he is someone who is so easily intimidated? They are always talking and telling him to do this or something else. If he had known that things would turn out this way, he should have gotten his major in school this way. If he had a decent job, he would read yesterday's game banner. He climbed up the door and said several times that it was all a robbery. Suddenly, on the landing, he was met by a girl with bunny ears on her head. She grinned and told him what a handsome guy he had finally arrived. My sister has been waiting for him for so long. He looked at her with embarrassment and said, Sister, it seems she confused him with someone else. She came closer to him and asked him not to pretend to be a stupid guy. At least not today, when she can give him a discount. He responded by trying to grab her with his hand, in which case he didn't need to act like a gentleman. Let her tell you how much it costs. She replied winking at him that it only cost 300 he could pay with cash or credit card. He raised his hand and told her that in that case she had definitely made a mistake with the person. He passed by and continued up the steps, following the fact that with the phenomenon, perhaps he had not been so unjustly robbed. She looked after him and mentally asked the question, was she really mistaken? He continued to rise, and with a tired look said out loud that he was glad to return home, the courier would be here soon. Suddenly, with a smile on his face, he said that he would leave him right here. The courier smiled even wider and said, looking after him, that he was an outstanding guy, he got what he deserved, this is his food. Yu was upset and told him to forgive him, but he ordered completely different food. The courier said with regret how this happened. Some physical characteristics that make them fat, some physical characteristics that help them get girls, and after 20 years of life, he realized that his physical characteristics are just confusing everything. He remembered people's conversations. Why? If it's not Zioli with his express delivery, then he has it or the wrong guy. Zhang Saner, did he really make a saner? No. Uncle, isn't he Eric Tsang from the two internal affairs? He looks more like Edison Chen. He walked to the door and, with a disappointed expression on his face, spoke to the little guy in charge of case two. He better go see a nice little goat or something like that. He pulled the door handle, got even angrier and suggested. He opens the door and manages to jam it every single day, let it open to him. At that moment, the light bulb in the entrance burned out and it became dark all around. Yu, when he realized this, was about to say something, but suddenly someone said, Eternal misfortune. He was very surprised and asked the question, who is speaking here? It must have been a hallucination. His body trembled with fear, and the unknown continued to say that what was lost must be destroyed. What is killed is ashes. Blood, flesh, which he became very scared, and he continued to think that he was being haunted by hallucinations. He is afraid that ghosts have begun to pester him. He just wants to say that it is possible that such an old house is haunted. He turned around with a smile on his face and said, Ghost, he thinks it's the wrong guy. The unknown person continues to say, Let the great person and fear appear to the whole world. These words frightened you greatly, he widened his eyes. And at this moment, there should not be a bright lightning that fell from the roof after opening the clasp. Meanwhile, in the palace, subordinates in red hoods approached the king. He spoke, sitting in the throne, to the mighty Lord of Ash, they will grant a sacrifice. The girl, who was tied with ropes and sat on her knees in front of him, with a red face from fear, said, No. The king grinned at her and said, Eternal misfortune and source of support, despising the white fog, Lord of the Ashes, who destroys the stars. For this they made a witch of blood and flesh. Tears appeared in the girl's eyes, and around her there was a large magic circle that emitted an unforgettable ray of light. Let the great persona and the feeling of fear appear before the whole world. The king angrily asked the question, Can a sacrificial call really help? Several hundred years later, Great Lord of Ash, did he really answer the call one more time? The king, with tears in his eyes and an incredibly frightened and at the same time joyful expression on his face, looked up and the surrounding guys shouted simultaneously several times for this to happen. They continued to shout about this for some time. Bright lightning illuminated the entire sky again, and it was clear from the girl's face that she was very worried about what was happening. A tear rolled down from my father's face, and he said, This time everything worked out. Insignificant mortals like them have no right to linger and observe. Everyone needs to get a certificate. Mass of devout followers. There was a bright flash in one of the offices. The girl was very wary in this large room. 
an ominous monster with bright eyes appeared. She turned around at this, trembling greatly, and said, Ash, Lord of Ash, this creature sparkled with a bright light, the candle melted, and the girl realized that she felt so warm that her whole body became wet. Her head was spinning. At that moment, you appeared among the dust on the table. He waved his hand in front of him and said how terrible it was. He's about to suffocate to death. At this moment, he looked to the side and asked, Is it a ghost? Stop. He is the same little girl who was sentenced with ropes. He looked at her, pointed his finger and said, A ghost with breasts. Blood began to flow from his nose, but suddenly he continues to say that if you look closely, she doesn't look like a ghost girl. First he saw this Verka with her. He reached for the rope around her neck and pulled it off, the rope splitting in two. What evil intentions could such a beautiful girl have? She's so sweaty, maybe she has a cold. He touched her cheek, she woke up, and he asked the question, is she okay? She should wake up. She tried to discuss something, her whole face turned red. He looked away thoughtfully and asked a question, should she be brought to the hospital? Or she seems a little strange. She fell to her knees and screamed, great lord of ash. He took it aside in bewilderment and said that she was a little mistaken and looked as if it didn't sound like it. He just has such physical characteristics because of which he is always confused with someone. She looked at him with her sparkling enchanted eyes and continued to speak, great lord of the ashes. With his legendary, final, and dazzling grandeur, could she, as a devout follower, confuse him? He frowned and asked why he thought it was more than a simple mistake. Let her tell him what kind of being this is. She replied, ultimate, excellent, indescribable. A monster with a device consisting of limbs appeared in front of her, the head of which glowed with a bright color, from the creature itself being charged with a spark. You looked at her in surprise, after which he came closer and asked again, is she seriously talking about this? Is she sure she's talking about him? At that moment, she closed her eyes and leaned against the wall. He wondered in bewilderment if he had scared her unconscious. But she shouldn't tell him that he was being set up for blackmail. He threw his backpack on the ground and began pouring liquid from a thermos into a mug, urging him to calm her down with a cup of coffee. He just says that he read a lot of anime and watched a lot of anime manga. If he really was reborn into someone else, he wouldn't be surprised. He handed her a cup of coffee. She opened her eyes and looked at him, frowning. He looked questioningly into her eyes and realized that she was just pretending all this time. After that, he continues to tell her with a thoughtful look that maybe he doesn't want to expose himself to blackmail, and she really could see him as some kind of demonic god. As a result, if he was reborn, then becoming a demon god is not something incomprehensible to him. He asked her not to be afraid of him, handed her a cup of coffee, and asked a question out of a sense of friendliness, what is her name? She was stunned by the question asked, and mentally asked herself, does such a powerful god really communicate with the insignificant her? She spoke with a feeling of embarrassment, despising the white fog, the lord of the ash, destroying the stars, her name is Aina. He looked away and seriously wondered, is this such a long name? With wealth he could play along. Aina, this name will be easy to fix. He once again brought the mug closer to her and said that there was no need to be afraid of him. Fine. This is coffee. Does she want to try it? The coffee was quite hot, and at that moment it began to bubble and sparkle with red magic. Ain's hair fluttered from the strong wind. She looked up and wondered, is this really how Mr. Lord takes the lives of his victims? She raised her hand to the glass and suggested, Mr. Lord, Aina offers him her life. He was surprised by these words and asked again, but what should he do with her life? He cleared his throat, addressed her by name, and asked the question, Who is she? How did she invite him here? She must explain to him honestly otherwise, but he could not agree as Aina stepped back and told him, The great lord of the ash. Aina is a victim used for summoning, a servant whose life is completely his. How can she dare to deceive him? He said these words in his thoughts and wondered, So this is another world, a mysterious, evil, re-church organization using a living sacrifice to summon the demon lord, the ash lord, but they accidentally summoned him. Yes, that's exactly what happens. At that moment, the candle completely melted, a bright glow appeared around his body. He looked at it in surprise and said, turning to the end, he began to shout, Aina, let her heed his order. She spoke back, tilting her head, yes. You spoke with a smile. He showed her how to move on with her life carefully. After these words, he now, and she looked at the empty space in surprise. She remembered the words of some people who said that they would all take her and feed her. She needed to take her until she was needed as a sacrifice. Her life was made for the sake of sacrifice, and she should be proud to be a victim. 
Tears appeared in her eyes, and she said, Of course she must continue to live well in order to carry out his great will and his mission. She turned to the Lord of Ash and asked the question, Why is this? Is this the reward he gave Anna? The Order of Ash Chaos has always advocated serving and calling upon the Lord of Ash, but throughout this millennium, the number of times the Lord has bestowed his favor is very few. Could it be that the great Lord of Ash prefers little girls? She closed her mouth in shock, then abruptly grabbed her head and asked, But how could Aina understand the mysterious intention of the great god being a mere mortal? She took the cup of bubbling drink and brought it to her mouth with a joyful expression on her face. After some time, when it was raining, she noticed an unforgettable luminous dome. Aina took a step. She left the palace, being inside this magical dome with a drink in her hands, and thought along the street the water was not coming closer to her. This is the power of the great Lord of Ash. Even the terrifying natural world is no match for the great Lord of Ash. Since childhood, she lived in an orphanage and never had the right to go out alone. And today, for the first time, she found herself alone in a big city. Maybe this is the gift that the Lord of Ash Beland gave him. It is the capital of Nolan and one of the largest cities in the world, Beland. She looked up and wondered, considering the surrounding factors, what kind of region was this? This gives off an unusual aura. The most important thing is to return to church as soon as possible. The rain continued to fall, the drops hitting the ground loudly. She saw the sign and walked closer to it. Meanwhile, a memorable beam of light appeared in some room of you, and he returned back, wondering where he was. He fell head first on the floor, which caused him to have a large bruise. The next day he woke up in semi-darkness and realized that he had passed out for the whole night. It looks like he arrived at the cafe, but why did he think he wasn't on earth? It looks like he is in the world of this strange cult and church. When he looked to the side, something alerted him, and he asked a question. Is there a photograph on the wall? What a luxury thing this boss is. At that moment, a girl walked past him, waved her hand, and offered him one latte cold. He was surprised by these words and asked again in bewilderment. Did she tell him that? She asked him to whom, but what else? Suddenly, many people started ordering drinks and saying two cups of espresso. He was actually mistaken for the boss in the photos. This boss is so weird, his physical attributes likely came into play again. He has nowhere else to go. He must help here until the boss arrives. It is possible that he will be accepted as an employee. A girl with short hair told him, One cold Americano, quick. He became embarrassed and could not answer. The hand on the clock showed almost half past eight, and at that moment some pumped up man burst in initially, turned to Dam, and asked him how much weight he had lost. Time continued to pass and eventually stopped at about twelve o'clock. One of the visitors opened the door and told him, Cool photo, boss. He looked, Thank you, let them come again. You, who was wiping the glass with a napkin, watched closely and said that life is too unpredictable, he moved to a barista. By the way, the business of this store is not so bad. But wait, the boss didn't come back all day. If he left now, wouldn't all his work be in vain? Horrible. Even if he doesn't come, there is food and a bed in the room inside, he will accept this as his salary for today. It became completely dark outside. Several people on stage in cloaks climbed the stairs to the entrance of the building and spoke near the door, Dr. Norn. The blonde man opened the door a little and asked a question through the crack. Is this the one who will perform the surgical reshaping? One of the men in the cloak answered, yes. Among them was Aina and Norn asked a question. Is this a little girl? She needs to be brought here. The reformation operation will be carried out in the underground operating room. She wondered, a reformation operation? Norn said that they were already here. They needed to be given a little time alone, but leave the burning blood. The man handed him a square object into the video box and said that he would be very surprised. Such an opinion had never been heard before. Norn asked with a grin, is this so? She should simply take off her cloak and lie down on the operating table. She did as she should and put her hands in special holders. Norn began to tear off her clothes, came up with an injection, and suggested starting with the administration of an anesthetic. He called and glued it to her hand. She closed her eyes tightly. After finishing, Norn turned away and said, As soon as the anesthetic begins to act, the reformation will begin. He opened the box, from which an unforgettable red light flashed out, which greatly alarmed him, and he said with a fearful expression as he performed the sacrifice, The past sacrifice was indeed successful. Just don't let him be told that the Lord of Ash loves silver hair and red eyes. He grabbed his head and screamed, Is it really blonde hair and blue eyes that are not attractive to him? 
Wait, maybe the Lord of Ash just likes little girls. If this is so, then in accordance with the plans of the first priest, she should become a child of God. She asked him again, A child of God? He replied, Yes, that's right, child of God. A child of a god is by no means a true descendant of the divine, but is most likely a form of conversion within that order. Each order has its own strange means for acquiring a child of God. The method carried out in the Chaos Ash Horde is the injection of burning blood. Thanks to this body, the Chosen One mutates and attracts superhuman strength. In fact, the Reformation operation can be restored to the Church. She knows why she is here because all these Order financiers are in this village and they all want to see the blood burn. The mortal body is always weak and sad, it is disgusting with age and even prone to death, it is absolutely disgusting, and everyone here wants to become a child of God, and by a lucky chance, she will be the first among all and surpass humanity. She will become the first child of God. He injected red liquid into the syringe and said that she already knew what she should do. So they begin. He injected this into a vein, and the red liquid spread throughout her body. Norn injected every last drop of liquid, she clenched her hands into fists, energetic red liquid began pouring out of her everywhere, and after a moment she relaxed, closed her eyes, and stopped moving. Norn opened his mouth in surprise and asked, Is this a failure? It seems she is not the chosen one. Suddenly he grinned and said, Silver hair and red eyes are not very good. At this moment, Aina tried to discuss something, and concluded ashes, the ashes that ordered her to live and she said out loud after these memories that she must live. Meanwhile in the garden, you, sitting on the bed, said because he is still here and not sure that he will meet the girl again, but she is enough, he no longer wants to be involved with this church, and with such rope-tying skills, there is no way they can't be serious. Organization. He looked away and heard a loud sound, after which he looked up, and someone's gaze told him, The palm of creativity limits life. He asked, Is this an earthquake? Enemy of Ash. He stopped and recognized this voice, which made him wary, and someone unknown continues to speak, white heavenly fog. New summoning spell. Victim. He looked into the distance in surprise and asked, is he calling again? And there will be that girl. He smiled, smoothed his hair, and expected new reincarnations with a satisfied expression on his face, when suddenly his face changed to a rougher one with full lips, and his voice said, great. You straightened his hands, but suddenly a problem arose. Why did everything stop? He doesn't want to go there yet. Everything lit up with a bright light. He, with an unpredictable expression on his face, grabbed his left side near his heart. His hand was enveloped in magical rays. He closed his eyes, straightened his hand, and, lying on the pillow, wondered what was the matter. This is by chance not because last time he pretended to be some kind of deity. An unforgettable ray of light appeared in his right hand. He raised his hand to his mouth and said, the heat in his chest spread to his hands. He felt as if he could emit fire. After a modest silence, he called the name of the famous photographer, Nekaji, who spoke several more times and said, no one sees anyway. Let it come out. He straightened his hand and began a spell in Japanese, according to Dao Sanchisan. Flame. The entire circle in front of him lit up with a bright, fiery light. He opened his mouth in surprise and said, Van de Fa. Suddenly, incredible fear was expressed on his face, and he screamed, What horror? He's about to incinerate the whole apartment. He tried to take the flame back with his hand, and after a moment, it actually went back into his hand. He silently looked at his hand and said that he managed to do it, after which he repeated this maneuver and again used the flame, after which he again absorbed it into himself. He took a sip and spoke a few more spells in Japanese, after which he said, Alice, she saw, it was as if he had been born again. A copy of the girl he created from flame appeared in front of him and screamed in surprise, Alice. The girl winked at him, he grabbed his chest from the feeling of love for her, his face turned from an emotional outburst, he easily lay down on the bed, the flame disappeared by itself. With his eyes closed, he wondered, I wonder if he could control the shape of the flame. He tried to create the letter N, which he succeeded in the same instant, followed by the letter B, which he looked at with a pleased expression on his face and said that was pretty cool. He seems to have a very fierce flame, but it's still not violent enough. There are so many books here that he wants to set fire to just a few of them and hide them anyway, no one will notice anything. He used fire and touched the book, which ignited, and he said that there was no danger here, so he would add some more fire. He added his magical powers to this, and a moment later the book was in perfect condition in his hands, 
causing him to throw it aside and shout what a weak fire this is. He couldn't even burn the old book. I just wasted my time. Before entering the room, a candle was lit on the wall. The door said loudly, the Norn said, taking a deep breath, that after all, it was not so easy to open. Then next time they'll take some girl with blonde hair. And with that girl we can try again. The door closed, Anna, with tears in her eyes, began to call the doctor, and said that she had succeeded, doctor. He paused in front of the door, after which he turned around with caution, and she repeated the words that she had succeeded. He was delighted, grabbed her by the shoulders, and said with a smile, she is still alive, which means that they did it. Ana was upset and mentally wondered whether the assumption that she would survive was so small. She, of course, survived thanks to the great Lord of Ash. She was born for the great Lord of Ash. It was necessary to tell the priest to prepare for the next ritual. Meanwhile, it was raining heavily outside near the vegetables. You said that it was time to show what he had learned. He brought the cup to the coffee machine and said that a month had already passed since he returned from the first call. His boss hasn't even come into the coffee shop since then, and he has nowhere to go yet, so he decided to stay in this coffee shop. He took a jug of milk and continued making the drink, insisting that these were not his greens, although he was a representative of this establishment. He made a beautiful figurine on the cup, and to be honest, it would be very cool to become a boss, but after much thought he realized that he really wanted to go home. He drank a cup of coffee and put the empty one on the table, after which he shouted for Alice to give it to him. Alice is an imaginary TV presenter. Loud sounds came from the vegetables, and at that moment that same voice began to pronounce, capture, the enemy, the opposite bank, deceive. You looked up and asked with a smile, is that all? He kept repeating this question after he said, this can't be, his grandfather's fart, and then longer than that. The place is already closed, he's going to bed. He went into the room and made an agreement. A month has already passed since he moved here, and everyone can hear calls to him. He counted about seven different types of summons. This won't work. In the last challenge, he only met a little girl, and if next time he comes across a bunch of evil cultists, and if they find out that he is not real, then he will definitely be finished. He heard that there are universities in the world here. But end college. Well, since this university must have had a lot of interesting materials, by this word he meant beautiful girls that made his cheeks blush. The voice sounded again. Endless suffering is the source of all who can, a hater of deception. He jumped up and said, it's happening again, Lord of Star Ash. He remembers this, this is the same sector for the girl. At that moment he evaporated from the bed and settled down in the very dimensions. Lightning struck in the sky ten minutes ago. The man in the cloak asked the question, is everyone ready? Then they begin. Endless suffering will be the source of all, hater of deception, lord of starry ashes, let him show his greatness. The lord of ash, of course, came down to them again. This is all for the sake of agitating them, rich people. Just let them pay for everything that the sect did, that's all. Everything Aina said was just words. There is a natural disaster hidden inside her. But thanks to him... A large-scale disaster rarely happens on Earth. There are ulterior motives within her. Aina said, the high priest, according to her, is talking about relics. Relics have magical powers that people come into contact with them, and most of these relics are sealed by them. Only rich people, rich people, can count on such relics. The man shouted, they are also sacrificing to the Lord of Ash. He looked towards the wall. Nearby there was a table on which lay a white mask. Lord of the starry sky, the man opened his arms and asked to show him your greatness. The candles went out abruptly, and the rain continued to pour outside. He opened his mouth, an unforgettable violet light shone in front of him, and he realized that something was happening wrong. Why so quiet he can't hear the rain do impossible? In thousands of years, the Lord of Ash has only stooped to him twice. Even if she told the truth, the Lord of Ash would not have descended by accident in such a short period of time. She spoke out loud, raising her head with alertness. Great Lord of Ash, a magical shining circle formed around the man. He made a sharp movement and realized, Ash, they should look up quickly. A bright orange glow formed there. He was dumbfounded with horror, and Aina smiled because of what was happening. Dr. Norn said with a radiant smile, the Lord of Ash came down to him. At this moment, the appearance of the Lord of Ash actually appeared in front of their appearance, around which many streams of energy formed from the sudden penetration. The hooded people said in horror, This is the Overlord. Aina rose to her feet and said that she had met him again, Lord of Ash. The appearance of this monster shone with magical light and continued to drain streams of energy. The man came down to his feet and spoke, 
O great Lord of the Ashes, he asks him to calm down, let him forgive them for causing him trouble. You, who turned out to be in his place, replied that he had absolutely no one to be angry with. On the contrary, he was even a little embarrassed. He scratched his leg and continued to speak calmly, everything was calm, and suddenly he was called, he hopes that he will not be discovered. When he opened his eyes, he saw in front of him a familiar girl named Aina, who was looking at him with a smile. He looked at her appearance and realized that she had very cool clothes and cultist style. This is great. His complexion also seems pleasant to him. This is probably his oracle. I'm sure it's on her. He didn't do it himself. The man frowned and said, The Lord of Ash just now. So what did he just say? It's such a quiet sound. He didn't hear anything at all. He did not answer the great Lord of Ash and hopes that he will not be punished for this. The first initiation, he met a ruler for the first time in several centuries. He can't just die like that. He realized, yes, he most likely needs to sacrifice them to change the subject of the conversation. The man again approached the Lord of Ash and said, Oh, great Lord of Ash, they were waiting for his treasure, the face of endless change. He looked at them in bewilderment and asked questions, Why do they need to shout so loudly? The judge in front of him is the high priest, and judging by him, I understand that it is better not to joke with him. Still, he will not come close to them, because if he is discovered, then everything will be over. All the people are so alarmed that they even started to cry. If they found out that he was not real, then at that moment his thoughts were interrupted by a man who, with tears in his eyes, discussed why the overlord was not answering. He was afraid that it was all over, and that the Lord of Ash was definitely angry with them. And so he, the high priest, met the ruler for the first time. So what, he immediately falls under reprisals. Yu, meanwhile, was thinking that he needed to act more calmly, because judging by their opinion, they had not noticed anything. He began to speak out loud, stupid commoners, he accepts their sacrifice. The white mask rose up on its own, and Yu said that it was too dangerous. This mask can still fly. He took it in his hands, and the man said in horror, the great Lord of Ash accepted the sacrifice. At that moment, each district was illuminated with a bright light, and the man sitting on his knees began to think, the high priest, the great one, he is already trembling all over, but he hopes that he has proven that he is his faithful follower. That's it, he's done, he won't die. But why is the great lord still here? It's like he's thinking about something. He understood everything, the overlord descends once every few thousand years, each time there must be something grandiose, and it seems that this time he came to discuss the topic of how he would take control of this entire world. Or better yet, he will ask. He spread his arms and said loudly, Endless suffering, the source of all needs, the lord of star ash. Let the whole world move according to his rules from now on. Aina also screamed, O great lord of the ashes. She wants him to know that they are not his trustworthy believers, they are deceivers. They not only want to approach him, they also want to neglect his lordship. The man got angry, dropped the hood from his head, and he shouted at her to close her mouth, because she had absolutely no idea what she was talking about. She's just an orphan from an orphanage and doesn't know anything, but she says such nonsense. She frowned, after which she suddenly grabbed her chest and lowered her gaze, and a smoke screen appeared in front of her, and you asked them a question... Did they neglect his lordship? Then they will all get what they deserve. The man was dumbfounded with fear, and those around him tried to say something, but suddenly you, gritting his teeth, told them they treated her badly. She didn't deserve this kind of treatment. He created a fiery flash in his hand and began to set everything on fire. While convincing her that she should live her life, she had her own destiny, and they, people, should not interfere with her life. The man was in the crosshairs of its effects, and in a moment everything around was ignited. The man said, It's hard to breathe from heavy horror. It's all an illusion. You raised his hand up and spoke to them. Now they heard exactly what he said. The man spoke, Endless suffering, the source of all those in need, the Lord of Star Ash. He is his humble servant with all honor and respect. Yui, that's all. And he will return to his world for now. He doesn't need anything in the near future, so no more sacrifices are needed. Aina opened her mouth in surprise and wondered, Is the ruler really that evil? Her eyes sparkled with delight, and she appeared, of course. Although when he appears, some kind of disaster is sure to happen, but because people cannot accept his power, the Lord of Ash is absolutely not evil. The rain continued to fall. He looked away and said, Well, if he could hear the rain outside, it means that the Lord of Ash had already left. The surrounding people were happy about what was happening and began to shout, when suddenly Norn shouted, What happened? What's happening to them? What even happened just now? 
Why are all people going crazy? The man answered him that they had to put everything in order, the energy field was super complex, the anti-magic bureau would come now, and although there are very few of them slowing down here, even if these few slow down go crazy, it will be a big problem for them. He must explain everything to him. The man's eyes glowed with a purple light, and he menacingly invited him to write an article on his knees. Norn casually wondered if he had gone mad. How dare he condemn the actions of the high priest? The man continues to say, Doctor, he wants him and all the people in their clan to do one very important thing. This thing has to do with a girl. Only she can understand the great Lord of Ash and was born for him. She laughed loudly on her knees and he asked her to come closer. She looked into his eyes and answered, okay, after which she approached him and he informed the society, shouting loudly, that Aina is a person chosen by God. Starting today, everyone will treat her with due respect. From today, he will personally be hers. She will have one important mission. She must help the ruler take control of the entire world and force all people to enter a completely new world. She looked at him in surprise, shook her hand into a fist and replied that she really needs his mentoring. It started to bloom outside. A week later, a man with long hair sat in a coffee shop and spoke menacingly the loud breath of the Lord of Ash a tangible revival of reality, even the air exhaled loudly. A young man in his twenties, director of plant cultivation. What's sacred here? You with a smile on her face turned to him as a guest and asked a question, does he want something to drink? He replied, black coffee. You smiled broadly at him and said, okay, now he's donating it. The man looked after him and continued to speak, like the Lord of Ash, he has a very strong smell. What kind of person is this? Maybe he's here to stop him. You began to prepare a cup of black coffee and thought that a visitor had finally arrived, and this business has not been going particularly well lately, and if there are no more visitors, he will sleep on the street. The hungry Lord of Ash can't pay the bill and spit on the street, and he doesn't even know what my cultists over there would think of him if they knew about it. Fine. Suddenly the man became very angry when he saw him in front of him and words flashed through his thoughts. There was absolutely no air left. Maybe he took all the air? You, with a smile on his face, presented him with a cup of coffee, for which he thanked him, abruptly snatched the cup and immediately drank all the coffee. You was very surprised by what was happening and shouted, It's hot. The man said out loud, in fact, This is coffee, not poison. Maybe he is not his enemy. You looked at the jar of paper figures standing behind his table and wondered, Are there thousands of paper cranes in this jar? The man answered, Yes, this belongs to his daughter. He once asked what she wanted, and it turned out that she wanted to have 1,000 paper cranes in this bank. You chuckled at this character and said that children have so many desires. The man said in response, yes, they agreed that when he had the opportunity and time, they would create these cranes together and, first of all, realize their desire. But he could not wait for this moment. This is the memory of his daughters. Several years ago, he buried it, so that every time he looked at it, he would not remember about it but he still misses his daughter very much, so he dug up this bank back. You touched his shoulder and apologized for the leading questions, after which the man told him that nothing bad had happened. You showed sympathy on his face and stated that he can understand what it is like to lose a loved one. It means being left on the bed for days and doing nothing. But they should not fall into despair. It just kills them, especially their loved one. I wouldn't like to see them like that either. A man appears no, some things are simply impossible to forget, only death can stop his longing for her, and it doesn't matter to him who he is, a priest, a cultist, or a person from a magic bureau, he will stop him only through his own corpse. You smiled and said that each person greets the departed differently. The man closed his eyes and realized, saw that he didn't really want to stop him. After these thoughts, he decided to tell him that their meeting was fate, his name is Byron Hart. You also told him his name and asked him to come more often. Hart answered well, after which he repeated his name and said it on the street. Apparently he was from distant lands. The door slammed and suddenly you appeared behind him, stopped him, grabbed him by the shoulder and asked him to wait. Hart was dumbfounded by the complexity of the horror and mystery of the situation, so he decided to stop him after all. You smiled and asked his face for forgiveness and said that he had not paid for the order yet. Hart apologized to him and gave him the money, and you asked him to come to him more often. Hart, with a sense of relief from his predicament, was he serious about the money? Doesn't he need it? He decides to forget about it. At least this person has no bad intentions against him. 
he will not hesitate to kill the Lord of Ash and make him a sacrifice to go to another world. Tonight, with the help of the taboo wizard, he will summon this inviolable ruler and thereby revive his beloved daughter. Shen Yu sits at his desk and reads aloud, starting from page 223, where it is said that the Lord of Ash held himself like a devoted boa constrictor, formed flaming wings and exuded a boundless stream of flames. His intention to become a cup as he gives food to his followers. His time is midnight. It represents the number zero. It is usually assumed that he goes into sleep and is a god for this world. It is believed that it is most likely beneficial to the god of the world. The interest of the people of the world in him is not special or great. Shen Yu then thought about it and noticed that this clearly happened in a manhua or novel. He closes the book and notes that this was the purchase of his acquaintance with the Window Lord or something else, but he still didn't understand what it was. He should check out other books too. Shen Yu begins to read the title, The White Fog of the Opposite Bank, The Colorless City, The Ancient Spirits, The Door to an Empty Dream, Observing the Primordial Chaos. Suddenly, he closes his eyes and realizes that he needs to stop. It seems to him that there are too many names leading to news for one mention. During the journey, you encountered all sorts of unimaginable misfortunes in life and work. Risky games were a possible failure. He was never lucky. It was because of this that his mind was on fire. It seems that he needs to learn the main character of the novel called The Ceremony of Reversing Fate. For this reason, he ran to his home and found this ancient book handed down from his ancestors. Although he didn't even know what kind of book it was, he didn't care at that time. Shen Yu carefully looks through the book and continues, then according to the instructions, he began the ceremony. The ritual technique was not strict. Rows of bright yellow paper should be pasted on the four sides of the table, and one name from the books should be written on each sheet of paper. And on each of the sheets you must write your name. Then you need to scroll the table and read the spell from the book. After reading the spell, you need to take the sheet with that name written. And finally, on the second day, at the same time, you need to collect the remaining sheets of paper. After this, you need to wait until nightfall in the cemetery so that nothing happens. After reading this, Shen Yu under his head with his hands and wondered what the impact was of going through all this and the ritual. And also, what names are we talking about? He created a small flame with a marker and noted that the coming days would be full of danger. He's not sure if I can intimidate it with such flames. Yesterday, a huge fiery image appeared behind you, and he said that after the second summoning, the area under control has increased, but unfortunately, this area is still not that strong. It is only good to frighten a person. Suddenly, he grabs his hands by the hair on his head and shouts, What is he hoping for? This is all such nonsense. This ability simply gives you the opportunity to scare people. After he turned to the white mask, which lies on the table, and thoughtfully said, This is a strange thing. It is extremely clear that this made that priest stronger, but in his hands, this mask is no different from an ordinary mask. Is he just using it wrong? Shen Yu puts on a mask and exclaims, Transformation. But nothing special happens, and he throws it on the floor with a loud scream, Useless nonsense. The mask suddenly seems to sink into the middle of the year, and Yu is surprised to note that this is a failure. Now he understands. He fussily begins to plan the room and say to the mirror, he needs a mirror. Okay, he found it. After this, Shen Yu stands in front of the mirror and thinks out loud. If he understood everything correctly, the mask falls into the shadows. It turns out that he needs to change his appearance. Then he puts on his mask and a black mist appears around him. When Yu looks in the mirror, he sees Byron Hart's face. Shen Yu corrects it and exclaims joyfully, he did it. The face is exactly the same, but the expression changes and is very natural. Since he can change his face, will it work with this body shape and clothes? Suddenly his loungewear changes to a superhero costume. Yu closes his eyes and says, crying, his dream has come true. Suddenly he hears a voice that says, the white fog of the opposite shore, the greatest existence of the insignificant world. Inexpressible, indescribable. When the voice fades away, Shen Yu frowns and looks at the white fog of the opposite bank. He had heard this before, the calling words are very similar, but not the same. Can the call of the same deity be pronounced differently? At this time, in the red brick appearance with the indicated windows, Byron should discuss pentagrams with a knife in his hand. He casts a spell, unspeakable, indescribable. A brown-haired girl with green eyes watches him and says, She prays for him to come into this world. He must realize what her heart desires. 
Byron Hart continues to say, April 30, Walpurg is night in this time of classical witches, he has been waiting for this day for months. A spell that has been preserved since time immemorial. The Lord of Ash existed from the very beginning of the existence of mankind, knew practically nothing, could do nothing. He can give a person any knowledge that he desires, as long as he brings enough sacrifices. It can bring joy and hope, but it can also bring pain and despair. Only this God is absolutely unable to provide happiness. Whether there will be a death penalty for this, Byron Hart is not worried, he wants to resurrect his daughter. Using the word, he squeezes a paper crane in his hand, and then throws his hands up. A stream of air and white mist are released onto it from top to bottom. After this, Byron suddenly opens his completely white eyes. Unknown writings are visible in them, and he is asked, Are these symbols? Characters begin to change entire sentences. As they fall, Byron Hart thinks out loud. He asks him why he has that expression on his face. He came into being as an endless white fog. It seems as if no one was interested in this. The silhouette of a man appears in the fog, and he looks at him. Why did he subconsciously become the guest they saw earlier? This is very helpful. It is thus not very similar to a sacrifice. It must be the initiator of the action. The girl sits on her knees, raises her head, and asks in bewilderment why he is so big. The fog gradually dissipates, and the large and terrible outlines of God appear. Byron Hart recalls that scientists have called it the mist on the other side for generations, but for an extraterrestrial God the name is meaningless. Suddenly he shouts that he understands everything. He is the lowest person who could see the face, only his heart is in turmoil, nothing more. In the fog an inscription appears that he is relatively right. Sheng Yu gives a thumbs up and exclaims, Very well said, this is the most standard answer. Byron tilts his head slightly and exclaims that it has finally happened. He makes sacrifices that possess all the great ones, which resembles the world. He really asks God to fulfill his wish. May he allow his daughter to be reborn. Byron Hart holds out his hand, on which floats a golden seed. A huge lizard with golden scales appears above him. He exclaims that he is offering God a first-class burning view. But he gets scared of something and suddenly shouts that this is simply disgusting. Shen Yu reasons, although judging by the morning meeting, this one named Byron does not seem like an evil person. Frankly, it's too dangerous. This should continue to be loaded until the call ends. The creature comes closer to him, and again someone's voice is heard, a stupid and weak mortal. He accepts the sacrifice that this mortal is waiting for. The lizard then turns into a stream of energy that heads towards Byron. It begins to shrink, and soon an egg appears in his hand. He watched this with joy and noted that he deserved it. It was good that he would not have to bear this matter. Suddenly he realizes that it has simply disappeared. There is absolutely nothing left. A deity of even greater power than he maintains. Byron Hart squints his eyes and then realizes with his head up and shouts that he finally has the opportunity to resurrect his daughter. Shen Yu sees this and says that this is in fact true. Although he doesn't know who Byron really is, he thought he truly loved his daughter. He very much regrets that he does not have the power that can resurrect his daughter. In the book called The Conventional God Outside the World, it is written that all creatures on Earth are divided into eight species. These are Dan, Wai, Ren, Zing, Bei, Ju, Kai, and Don. It seems that the Lord of Ash refers to Don. Bei governs the principle of procreation and feasting, food, lights, and not return. He is ready to give him food as a reward. The white fog from that shore is the extraterrestrial god Kai. These are the criteria of openness and destruction. This does not allow them to exist in employment, seeking to dislodge them from the refuge of ignorance. It gives knowledge to people who pay attention, discover new knowledge as a reward or reward. Byron Hart hears this and begins to get angry. Behind this white fog on the other side, it will be necessary to get its justification. Maybe he will find knowledge that can be given to God. In the book, Yu thinks that the white fog from the other shore gives knowledge that most people cannot understand, then you need to give him something that does not exist in this world. The level of writing and style, that should be enough. If he doesn't realize the power of the Lord of the Mist other than resurrecting his daughter, then it can be said that he is not intelligent enough. Byron frowns and asks why he's not answering. Are these victims really not enough? But suddenly he looks up sadly. Among the inscription of the fog that appeared, in order to make his wish come true, he needs to study deeper and more mysterious knowledge. Byron Hart immediately begins to reveal that Bei Ming has a fish named Kun. 
It's big, but he doesn't know how much is in that thousand. It turned into a bird called Pan. Peng has a big back, but he doesn't know how much is in this thousand. Suddenly, he opens his eyes and exclaims this. Among the fog, the inscription appears again, removal of fetters. Soul and body are natural, there is only hostility to world matter. Only the body is valuable, it can give everything to the spirits. His eyes light up blue, and he repeats, removing the bonds. This is forbidden knowledge. As a result, God's goal was not resurrection, but to gain insight, an eternal soul. In this case, not only war may happen, the whole world may even fall apart. The universe and his body are reflected in his eyes. After this, Byron's eyes acquire their normal color, and he finds himself alone. His body and arms begin to dissolve, and he notices that he is finally done. He hopes that God learned his lesson at the very beginning. Removal will allow the era to break through. This is the reason that makes people curse. To his surprise, it appears in their world. Could it be that God's goals are deeper? Now only he was given the knowledge of how to resurrect the dead. Knowledge of this level was transferred to him. At this time in the cafe, Shen Yu takes a magical pose and his hair rises up. Then he opens his eyes and notices with satisfaction that he is no longer a beginner. Yu picks up the phone, which shows that it is 12.20 a.m. He says that before the call, he remembers that the time was 11.30 at night. There is nothing wrong with learning in a book that the white mist from that shore of the 23rd century was a god for the universe. It was not a call from the Lord of Ash, the white fog from the other shore. Will there be another call after this? Shen Yu sits down at the table and writes something in a notebook. He reasons that Byron is somewhere in the old castle. As a result, he resurrected his daughter. There is also this photo, but the exact location is unknown, so there is no point in using it. After all, it was done at some health risk, but he thinks it will be beneficial. It's a pity that he forgot to take photographs the last two times. Shen Yu puts his hand to his face and smiles, then lastly he does something. He will check if he has acquired any new knowledge. Suddenly Yu raises his hand up and screams. But nothing happens, and then he notes with disappointment that he has absolutely no abilities. The flame also intensified. The mask is very effective. Then Shen Yu picks up the red seed and remembers there is also this. He knows that many things cannot be taken, but as a great god for the universe, according to his type, he can transport corpses. Although this lizard had seen this horror, he would like to know more than this unknown. And this seed may come in handy. Shen Yu then puts it in a box, appears in the shelf, and, pushing it in, notes that it is now discreet. When it gets dark outside and night falls, Yu firmly spits on the bed. But suddenly the shelf opens and a small box falls. The seed falls out accidentally and begins to ignite. A huge lizard with golden scales appears in the room. It towers over the shining Shen Yu, but he does not wake up, but simply turns to the side. The lizard is very surprised, and a bright glow begins to appear from him. It sees this and wonders, is this the Lord of Ash? The lizard turns to him and notes that he is handsome. But Shen Yu slightly closes his eyes and crawls out of the room very frighteningly quickly. When the lizard finds himself on the street, he stops and thinks. But then the whole body of this one begins to glow with a very bright light. The lizard changes and turns into a cat with beautiful blue eyes. It jumps onto the fence and leaves. George is one of seven Category A investigators at Nolan. The so-called Category A category are investigators dealing with serious situations. He is the object of admiration for newcomers to the Anti-Magic Bureau. They secretly call him a legendary investigator, a strange killer, an undead bird. George turns to the interlocutor with whom he is talking through headphones and says that he is annoying, he should quickly get to the point. The interlocutor immediately answers with fear that he is to blame. He is just very excited. That man is just a mere mortal. Someone saw a strange cup coming up here, but he had already investigated it. The owner of the cafe is a very neat person, a completely innocent person. Despite the unsatisfactory face of the investigator, in connection with the anti-magic regulations, he needs to come in and see everything. George folds his umbrella and thoughtfully replies that he understands. Then he thinks that in this case, the situation is quite serious, the level of confidentiality is ridiculously high. Due to the night, the girl suddenly wakes up on the bed and suddenly screams, Demon God. It's a demon god. Demonic god in Nolan. But he grins and asks what could be worse than the coming of a demonic god. In the end, the worst outcome is the destruction of all humanity. 
Using the text, he takes a piece of paper out of his pocket and reveals that it is very interesting. If you look closely, you can clearly see the personality in the photo. Through the bright flash, the silhouette of a girl with long blonde hair is visible in the photographs. After a while, he walks into the cafe where Shen Yu works and asks for one cup of latte. Yu wipes down the bar counter and replies with a smile, okay, he's doing everything now. Then he turns away and adds that the visitor can sit down for now. George looks at him and wonders if this is really a simple person who has never had contact with this world. There is nothing to inspect here, another useless investigation. Shen Yu then brings him a cup and tells him that this is his latte. Then George asks him to ask him one question. Have they found anything unusual lately? Yu excitedly replies that he thinks there is something that is completely beyond common sense. It is very unusual. Lately, no matter how nice the weather, there are almost no people in the coffee shop. At this moment, he realizes that this person should not know about his origin. He needs to remain calm and not reveal his identity. George just thanks him and says that he understands everything. The clock shows 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and Shen Yu bids him farewell. He must come again. George leaves and thanks him again. The coffee was very tasty. Yu follows him with his gaze, and after relief says, It seems that he is an ordinary person. This guest is just too excited. But he looked really scary. Suddenly his fingers begin to vibrate, and he noticed that he felt a coldness in his body. It seems that the awakening of power will take a while. Nothing happened. Immediately after the call. The clock on his phone shows 9.55 p.m. Shen Yu extends his hand upward and tries to summon power. But after frowning, the question arises, why can't he do it? Yet he needs to feel this power to control the flow in the body. Suddenly he turns into transparent smoke and exclaims that his body has evaporated. He can move around. Yu walks through the cafe and his body begins to appear again. He exclaims joyfully that he has finally shown up. It lasted almost 17 seconds. It's better than flames. At least this power can be used to escape. The cafe door opens and George enters. Shen Yu sees him and asks with a smile, is he back? And he also thought excitedly that he almost got caught. If the man had come in a little earlier, he would have been exposed. George passes and will remember that there is a scent of anger in this report. Yes, it is an unimaginably terrifying force. He thought he was very much mistaken about this guy. He emanates a bright fiery glow and noticed with surprise. Now it's clear why he wanted to return here. This oppressive feeling is felt much stronger here than outside. After he told Shen Yu that a powerful demon aura shook and surrounded the entire cafe. In comparison, it's like a small boat on big waves. But Yu doesn't answer anything for this. But the question is, would he like another cup of coffee? George smiles and says, great, then he'll have another latte. Shen Yu asks him to wait a little but soon announces that apparently there are not enough ingredients, he must go out and bring everything. After he walked into the other room and the situation erupted in panic, did he really see everything? Deadlines are good, opening is bad. What happens if he confesses? Yu grabs his head and exclaims, no, no. The thing that comes to his mind is to continue to lie. At this time, George is in the cafe and thinks that he definitely did not come for the coffee. If everything is fine, then why is the extraterrestrial demonic aura being inhaled so strongly here? Then what does this guy want? After he turned his head and looked at the table in surprise, is that a phone? So this is what Shen Yu wants him to see. George takes the phone in his hands and he goes to the home screen and then opens the gallery, which contains a large number of photos of cats. He noted that this guy has a great love for cats. George scrolls further through the photos and suddenly stops this. He opens one of the photographs, which shows a stone floor and a stone wall. He thoughtfully noted that although only part of the pentagram on the floor is visible, this is definitely a challenge from the untouchable. He needs to find out what it all means. Shen Yu comes back and announces that he has arrived. The guest still has to wait a little. But then he looks around and wonders where he went. Why did he leave so quickly? In the stone room, the pentagram on the floor was almost erased. The door opens and George enters. He noticed that indeed, the breath left by the great extraterrestrial god was very strong. Suddenly he freezes and sees an unknown creature ahead in the fog and two red burning eyes and realizes that this is not the breath that defines the ash. What is this monster doing here? A lizard jumps out at him from the fog and he shouts that this is primordial chaos. George jumps to the side, pushing off the wall first with one, then with the other. He flies right over the lizard's tail and casts a spell, a call to technique, the third blade. 
A small blade appears in his hands, and he noticed, although this is only the second level among madness, excitement, disaster, and untouchables, it must be captured the lizard stops in bewilderment and looks around. It's a wonderful shiny blade that flies right over his head. Despite trying to escape from the lizard, it notices him and opens its mouth wide. He stops and closes his eyes, telling him to take his head. Suddenly a blade falls on the lizard from above and injures it. George says that this technique calls. The blade is again in his hands, and the lizard is shocked at the stop and runs out of the room, breaking through the wall. He observes this and notes that it is useless, but as long as a person exists in this world, he will always have to fear for his life. Then George throws the blade to the side, it flies quickly, the stone in the handle begins to glow brightly. The blade is then converted into energy, which creates a route to the escaped lizard. He exclaims again, a call to technique. After that, George throws the blade forward again and repeats, call to technique. Summoning technique, summoning technique. The blade returns to his palm and George notes that this was much more difficult. He already plays with two fingers, two toes, and the upper half of his face. He attacked five times, and it was all useless. It looks like this level of use didn't kill him. God didn't look very good. But he is afraid that even a wizard would be easier to deal with. George opens the zone and begins to follow a deep mark on the ground and brings in something he doesn't know what to do now. Then Byron puts on his headphones and says that this is primordial chaos. He remembers that it is from the Ash Lord clan, but judging by the trauma left behind by the summoning, it seems that it was the white mist on the opposite shore. It can be seen that there are quite a few performers named Beland on this stage. George turns to Anda and says that he is writing a detailed report by a senior official of the Anti-Magic Bureau. But he is afraid that the risk level is that the person will be predetermined as a non-contact. Two months later, on a rainy day, there is fire energy on the roof of a building. It comes down and flies straight into the cafe. Fiery energy flies from within, and Shen Yu catches it with his hand. He closes his eyes and says that the maximum distance is about 300 meters. Through the flames, you can clearly hear the voices of passers-by. They can be heard clearly in his head. Then he suddenly opens his eyes and notices, then he can begin. His hand begins to turn into mist, and he says that the cloud mist is too weak. He needs to create a cloud mist instantly. Only then can he achieve the effect of real manifestation. It is a pity that the foggy body can neither increase nor decrease, and only the right hand goes into the fog. Yu opens his right palm, on which a small flame appears. He continues to reason, one hand attacks, the other disguises, two times with completely different strengths. This concludes today's training. In the evening, Shen Yu lies in bed and remembers that George seems to have not been to the coffee shop for several days. Things have not been going well lately. He is really looking forward to him returning and everything will be fine. Before he treated George with that world several times, George put on a stony expression every time. Obviously, he listened to him carefully. That's good. Another unusual friend in this world. If his identity is revealed later, he will be hunted. Perhaps he will still need his help. With the help of a word, he closes his eyes and then finds himself in an unknown place. Yu is surrounded by tall stone columns, emitting bright rays of light from top to bottom. He looks up and wonders, is this a dream? Everything here turns to ashes. Maybe this is the territory of the Lord of Ash. Suddenly, he looks forward and sees a girl. Shen Yu is perplexed. Is this Aina? Then he approaches her and, looking back, notices that judging by her pose, she actually spat. In that case, he can do whatever he wants. With the essence of the word, he squeezes her cheeks and creates a smile on her face. Suddenly, he looks ahead and sees how the stone pillars begin to turn into ash. It seems to you that the dream will not last long. This is the first time in two months that he has dreamed like this. First, he needs to wake up. He also begins to turn into ashes, but gradually pats Aina on the head and tells her that they will see each other again. At night in a house with glass windows, someone screams loudly, the great lord of ash. Aina wakes up with a fright and says that before going to bed, she used the incorporeal technique that she recently learned and tried to contact the lord of ash. She succeeded. Suddenly she squints her eyes and exclaims, something is burning very strongly. Is there something hot on her back? She has a red symbol on her back. Aina turns around and wonders if this is not a seal bestowed by the Lord of Ash. It's raining heavily outside and heavy drops are falling on someone's robe. Shen Yu stands asleep and says that even if he doesn't look in the face, he thought that he had already seen that girl three times. 
An unknown man in a black robe stands near the cafe and says that inside the cafe would be much better. Yu continues to reason, but this is better than a chance meeting in reality, fortunately. She and my cultists do not know where he lives. Otherwise, his peace will come to an end. Suddenly, the door of the cafe opened. He is a visitor and Aina always enters. She turns to him and Shen Yu is shocked that this can't be true. The shadow mask is too far away. He turns away from her and asks if she wants anything even a little Aner repeats in surprise. A little something Yu grits her teeth and is embarrassed. How did she know that he lives here? And how did she even get to this place? They definitely couldn't have met somewhere before. It's just unreasonable. Maybe these cultists have a special ability, like hypnosis or something like that. He needs to figure out how to deceive her. He moves away from Aina and says, she's finally here. Shen Yu was grinning with his eyes at this time. He had already accidentally appeared in front of her like this. A sudden meeting of an extraterrestrial god that a person believes in must be very shocking. Aina looks at him in bewilderment and asks who he is. Yu turns to her with a smile and says that he didn't expect her to find this place. Now she can say what happened this time. But she also replies with a smile that she has nothing to tell him. He is embarrassed and thoughtful. It seems that she has no evil intentions. This is good, after all. It was not in vain that he accidentally saved her. Shen Yu then tells her that she looks very tired. Why don't she have a cup of coffee? What kind of coffee does she prefer? But Aina explains that she turns into coffee more than once. Yu smiles and says that if she doesn't know, then she can just take a vanilla latte. The taste should be just right for her age. She agrees, okay. After that, she walked away and, looking at him, noticed that this unfamiliar man looked very familiar. Does he really know her Shen Yu also heads to the bar and looks unhappily? It seems that she is still in shock from the sudden meeting with the deity. Aina sits down at the table and thinks that the burning, distorted heavy aura of the Lord of Ash is hovering here. However, who is he? Yu brings her coffee and happily says to Aina, she must be surprised why he is here. But she again doesn't understand him and asks what? She just thought that here in his cafe, there was a great aura of the Lord of Ash and all that. When Shen Yu asked the question, it turns out that she didn't recognize him. In this case, it has the smell itself. In general, it doesn't matter to him how to get rid of this aura. But since this is already so, he will continue to pretend. It is too difficult to claim the title of Lord of the Ash. If he needs to remain in this vegetable every day, it will be impossible to maintain the image of a deity all the time. She does not seem to know his second personality. Since this is the case, she can pretend to be God's messenger conveying God's instructions. Aina takes a cup of vanilla latte and, licking her lips, notes that it is probably sweet and cool. Suddenly Shen Yu throws a towel on her head and says that she should dry her hair. She is soaked through. He then turns to the bar stool and explains that the great Lord of Ash is constantly watching everyone. Suddenly the door opens and George enters. Yu looks at him in surprise and wonders, is he covered in blood? And yet he came here so confidently. Did he have to fight? Then he realizes it can't be. Aina is still here, he shouldn't let them meet. So he approaches him and greets him, saying that he can go to another room. With the help of the word he points to the side. George watched him and noticed that this guy knew he was coming and was even waiting for a place to talk. He's incredible. Then he agrees, okay, they can go and talk. George sits down at the table and begins. He believes that Shen Yu has long guessed that he is an investigator from the Anti-Magic Bureau in accordance with all of the above. This means that they are responsible for protecting the average civilization. They are well aware that the investigators are just ghosts on the front line. Yu listens to him and says it's good work. He also looked. It's good that he didn't notice Aina. She seems to be just a visitor hiding from the rain. George continued to say, Today he came here to do his business. Shen Yu agrees, okay. But first he will make him a cup of coffee. It seems they have something to discuss. He hears this and looks surprised. When he comes here, he must have coffee. But he still agrees and thanks him, okay. Yu walks out the door and says with a sigh that he still needs to take payment. Then he closes it and exclaims, this can't be. It's bad timing, he needs to get someone out of here. After that, he approaches Aina and asks, is she here because of the order? At that moment, she realizes that her mark on her back will first burn. She looks at him and explains that the order is now going through difficult times. They are faced with a silent prophecy of a deadly pursuit. She wants to once again summon the great Lord of Ash. Shen Yu asks again, silent prophecy. He understood everything. But she had to trust that the Lord of Ash would deal with this. 
To prevent this from happening, she must not be afraid. She must calmly trust in the power of the great Lord of Ash. She does not need to be afraid of the darkness. It's time for tension. Aina listens to him and replies, Well, she didn't understand anything, but it was very encouraging. Yu extends her hand forward and continues to speak. The Lord of Ash must watch her carefully and make sure that what happened happens. She should be back today. She hears this and exclaims, Good. After some time, Shen Yu returns to Georgia and opens the door, asking if he's already tired of waiting. Now they can discuss his case. He pulls a photograph out of his coat pocket and explains that he came here today to help him find this person in the photographs. Most likely, this member of some order, the power of cultists seriously threatens the stability of the country. And the regional bureau with magic must eradicate this country. With the body of the word, he hands over the photo, and Shen Yu is very surprised when he looks at it. He understands that this is Aina. He looks at the photo with excitement. How can he help George with his search? They now report that to prevent this from happening, he must talk about their relationship. Then Yu turns to him and announces that this means that he can only find her if he is unlucky enough to meet this girl. George hears this and thinks that the person in the photographs looks very blurry. It is impossible to understand whether it is a guy or a girl. Besides, he did not tell him about any girl. After all, he turned to the right person. Then he thanked him and asked how long he would have to die for all this. Shen Yu explains that he will owe him a favor. But George crosses his arms and thinks that he is obliged to be the favor of a mysterious stranger. This is not very good. It is better for him to offer him something material. He will simply give him some antiques and pay. Then he gets up from the table and says that he is still better, because he donates several gifts to him as payment for the service. They will meet again. Yu, sitting at the table, says goodbye to him. George leaves, and Shen Yu, clutching his head, thinks, This must be his fantasy. There is always a feeling as if he is in the center of a love whirlpool. After a while, the girl stands near the side and examines many plants. Someone shouts to her, Among. She turns around and exclaims with a smile, teacher. Byron Hart approaches her and asks what she wanted to talk about. Yinna is embarrassed and then asks, Could he give her twice as much scholarship money this time? He knows what her marital status is. She has to feed eight brothers and sisters. And several more of her former classmates are in the hospital. She is worried that this matter is very risky. So could he give her more money? Byron is sad and thoughtful again. She has a very strong willpower, perhaps her strength is not very high quality, but she still holds up well after the ritual. After that he agrees, okay. I hear this and jump up and down happily. Byron Hart muses that only those people who care about the world can love money, like that mysterious guy from the cafe who doesn't seem to care about anything that is part of their world. So let the calling begin. After some time, Byron preaches a spell, unimaginable, indescribable, unknown in form. Mysterious God. Inside he is complete disappointment and suffering, so he will take the chance to contact him. He will subjugate all good and all evil to him. He only asks that God fulfill his large-scale innermost desire. She closes her eyes in concentration and mentally says that she doesn't see or hear. A silhouette appears in the fog and says that Byron Hart should be smiling at him, but he does not know how to revive his daughter. Then he thought that the creator of everything, the owner of power, who covers the whole world like a fog, his power is really great, and Byron has a very narrow understanding, and he does not understand many things at all. It would be lucky if he had great power. Shen Yu, who looks just like Byron Hart, passes him and asks if he wants something more. He also recalls that during the last call, he realized that he could not be seen. Byron squints his eyes tightly and agrees. Yes, he really wants more. He longs for his greatness, his immense knowledge. Yu goes further and replies that his wish will certainly come true. For this, a suitable sacrifice is needed. With a significant word, he approaches Ya. Na, who continues to stand with her eyes closed and covering her ears with her fingers. Shen Yu sees this and takes a photo. And as he continues to take pictures, Byron exclaims, Of course he brought a fitting offering with the body of the word. He takes out a Chinese fortune ring with a transformation level. If you wear this during the day, then luck will protect the person. But if a person puts on this ring in the evening, then luck will simply turn away from him. You takes a ring and a watch, apparently made of silver. It's a pity that it's not money. Because it seems to him that he could not break the electricity this month, and if there is no other choice, he will simply sell this ring. Someone comes to the exit door to the room and pushes it open. 
Byron Hart stands in front of Shen Yu and, interestingly, this time it is necessary to tell God. Yu also thinks, I wonder what forbidden knowledge he can impart this time. Then the door opens suddenly and the girl screams. Father Byron Hart turns around and looks at the blonde with yellow eyes and exclaims, Evian Na opens one eye and wonders who it is. But suddenly she understands everything and faints. Yana comes up to Byron and says that she seemed to have had a very long dream. In her dream, it seemed that someone was waiting for her and was trying to wake her up. This dream lasted so long that she already thought that she would never wake up. Everything lasted until she felt cold and finally she woke up. Byron Hart grins and notes that God really brought her to life. How did this happen? Is it really all thanks to the knowledge of secret techniques from ancient books? Although he doesn't fully understand how he managed to do it, but if he thinks like that, then now he is even more able to be convinced that he can become a god you leaves and says that when he takes action against them, he can make his wish come true. When he calls upon him next time, he must bring an even better offering. Byron frowns at her. God said he needed a better victim. He was unhappy with this sacrifice, so he didn't give him any knowledge. Eva looks at him and says that she thought the atmosphere was very pleasant, as if someone was watching her through a fog and her soul became warmer. Byron Hart clenches his teeth in anger and forgets himself. Is someone watching Eve in the fog? He looks at her and angrily notes that if he sacrifices Eve, then it will be possible to obtain new knowledge. New forbidden knowledge, she puts her hand on his shoulder and looks at her father. What happened to him? Suddenly, Byron seems to wake up from a dream and tears appear in his eyes. He turns to his daughter Eve. He then abruptly hugs her and asks for forgiveness, despite the fact that he did not offend her. He would never let anyone take her away again. She happily closes her eyes and agrees, but will not leave again. But Byron again frowns angrily and exclaims, the creator god of everything, the owner of the power that covers the whole world like fog, next time he will definitely sacrifice a worthy sacrifice until then, he should be left alone by him and his daughter. Shen Yu hears this and looks embarrassed, he just glanced at his daughter, he shouldn't react like that. Byron falls to his knees, causing fog, and says that a few days ago, in a quiet language, he gave him an invitation to join the team, and their condition was a relic that could bring misfortune. He never intended to get involved with cultists, but now he fears that he has no choice. With the help of a word, he squeezes what is in his trouser pocket. After some time, a loud sound occurred in the coffee shop. Yu glowed with a bright light and began to gradually appear in the atmosphere, realizing that his powers had really grown, and he did not even know what level he had reached. Unfortunately, he still doesn't know how to use the ring Byron gave him. His knowledge is too limited when it comes to the magical world. Does he really have to earn extra money to buy books and learn all the magical secrets? Who actually does that he hit himself on the lips and continued to scream? That's how much work he'll have to do his cheek was red from the blows, and he continued to say with a thoughtful expression on his face. Maybe he should try asking George so that he could tell him about the use of these rings. He grabbed a long hooded sweater on the shelf and decided that was what he would do. It's time for him and Alice to go out too, he put on a jacket and smiled on his face. It's not for nothing that they say that the more expensive, the better the quality when he went outside. He was caught in heavy rain and said that the rain was pouring out of buckets outside. He walked up to the bus, thinking that during the last call he had managed to take a few shots. One photo shows a structure outside the window, which should be somewhere at the end of the southern district in Beland. He sat down on a comfortable place near the window. The bright rays of the sun penetrated through him. He looked at everything that was happening and thought, if he remembers correctly, then in the picture there was a glass bridge installed next to the wall of the observation deck. This large city is divided into four districts. Beland Fortress is the site and trading center in the western district of Beland, Nolan Palace, the seat of the Prime Minister, Parliament and Government Ministry. The East District is an industrial and working-class residential area, while the South District is a mixed industrial, commercial and residential area. Each district border forms a huge wall between each other, and if ordinary people even leave the city, they will have to apply to the government with this application. He wandered along the glass bridge and showed up in such a terrible situation. Probably only he would have decided to come here and watch everyone. Suddenly, he noticed another man standing nearby in a blue cloak and said, after all, no, he was mistaken in his factions. It was a girl who turned in his direction and wondered if he was like a high school student. Is he one of the sacred people of this world? After all, this is the first time she has seen such a person. 
he decided that he would not bother her and stood a few meters away from her, because he had more important things to do. He took out binoculars, looked into the distance with this, and said out loud, Here, yes, exactly from this angle. That's right, this is such a big residence, is Byron supposed to have another identity other than being a magician? Then, for a long time, he will pretend to be a photographer and collect as much information as possible about the victims. He will pretend to be photographing the beauty of nature. So it will definitely not be possible to open it. Byron recommended extraterrestrial gods. If he reveals his identity, he will simply complain about him to George. This is the same girl who fainted. There are a lot of stops on this bus, but from her appearance you can tell that she is a student, and this bus should stop at Baden College. She is also the right age for this. Accordingly, Byron may also be associated with this college. Later, he turned again towards the girl in the blue cloak and said that this girl with black hair came here in such a rainy darkness. So does she really have some secrets, just like he does? He turned towards the exit from the bridge and continued to say that lately he had begun to suspect everyone, so he should better return. Still, she didn't seem to want to communicate with him either. She looked in his direction as he walked away and mentally wondered, since this gives off a strong aura of the Lord of Ash, who is he anyway? Only that she almost stuck a knife in him at that moment, someone approached the girl. It was a man covering himself from the rain with an umbrella. He said hello and asked a question, is she his new partner? She's a high school student and her name is Su Lin. She answered seriously. No, no, she is already a university student and is in her first year at Bedeen College. This question was asked to George, and he told her that Nolan's campaign had come to an end, since they gave him a high school student as a partner to exterminate the demons. He followed closely and agreed that he would need to retire early. The girl got angry and screamed. She had already said that she was a university student. She was 17 years old. But thanks to her qualities, she was transferred to college. George asked her again, but her age is still a high school student. She screamed even more strongly from incredible power. She is a university student with such a loud cry, George said in his ears, and she continued to speak out threateningly to him. Besides, she is a B-rank investigator, and before becoming an investigator, she had been choosing experience for ten years. She may have recently joined the Anti-Magic Bureau, but he can't belittle her like that just because she's new. George grinned and said in response, Okay, he understood everything, but it doesn't matter, after which he repeated the phrase university student several times. It doesn't matter where she goes to school or college, he has something to tell her. This city stands on the edge of the collapse, and soon in some part of this city, in one of the churches, a new call will take place, and this time they decided to sacrifice something very dear. This is Beland Lin said in response that she should tell him on the way. George asked in bewilderment where she wanted to go. She replied that she was already hungry, so he should invite her to dinner. He cares why on earth he should do this. But suddenly she sharply straightened her hand and said with complete confidence in her actions, Firstly, he is already a senior, and she is still a beginner, and it is obvious that he should invite her. Secondly, his experience and rank, salary, bonuses, and everything else are much higher and greater than hers. After that, she extended her mouth to him, and he said in response, Okay, he invites her, he offers a place in a cafe where he often goes. There he introduces her to one person. She grinned and said the most important thing is that she eats. Meanwhile, while you were taking a bath and smiling on your face, he said that last time he helped him borrow the book, and this time he will take his face again to go to the corridor. Suddenly someone shouted, is there someone here? He was very surprised and wondered, frowning, is it George? He was glad to see him, thinking that the business was a success. Meanwhile, in the coffee shop, someone came in and asked a question, is there anyone here? Liniella looked around and told him that the guy he was talking about was not here. George replied, The door is open, and that means he must be here. At that moment, you himself came out to them, saying that in such rainy weather he still managed to come to him. Mr. George, he likes his cafe so much. At the moment of raising his hands, his whole body glowed with magical light, because of which the line tensed greatly and fear was visible in her eyes. She immediately saw a magical fire book and the crazy eyes of a man, as well as a two-story house with an elongated shining base. After these visions, she said that if possible, the best solution would be to kill them all. You came closer and said, he thought that only adults were accepted into the anti-magic bureau. Is she in high school? 
Lynn looked at him silently, and at that moment remembered the words of George, who said that for now you just need to observe this guy and the dialogue with him, which made her frown and answer with a feeling of anger that she was a university student. George chuckled at her and said, Yeah, freshman year, it's almost the same as high school, and she's only 17 years old, so there's no difference. After the look at these words changed to an even more furious one, and George spoke, they dealt with the acquaintance, and now they should talk about the past matter. He remembers asking him to find one person. You answered him that everything must comply with the old rule, Mr. George. He must order two cups of coffee first, and they will agree on the rest later. He replied that it was good and said that he would order a latte again. Lynn frowned as she read the menu, but suddenly she looked into the distance and a bright spark appeared in her eyes. From the menu, she decided to choose moose cake, chicken sandwich, tiramisu, milk cake, fresh baked egg tart, donut, and macaroni, each serving two. He was very surprised by such a large order and, turning around, asked the question, what kind of coffee will they drink? She replied with a sad look that she was quite a coffee drinker, so he could choose to watch it. He replied that since things were this way, he was preparing something for her that she would definitely be delighted with. She answered him okay, after which he decided to cook. Realizing that he had seen a big jackpot, George asked why order so much if she couldn't eat it all anyway. She replied that she would take all the functions with her. George suggested that if you and her ordered the same amount in a regular cafe, then how much would it all cost? She replied that he still treats her. He responded to these words with his silence, and suddenly she continued to say that he was in a rank investigator, and his salary was higher than 99% of the country's population. For him, housing, medical services, training, travel are all free, and due to the completion of additional tasks, he receives additional payment. Today, he needs to take advantage of the signs that he was given to complete the mission. After all, they came to talk to exactly that guy. George lowered his gaze and said in response, Yes, the investigators here value everything, but few high-ranking investigators live to see retirement. But she's a B-rank investigator, so why does she look like some kind of beggar? Lynn closed her eyes and replied that it was all because she had a lot of expenses. After some time, she began to fulfill all the ordered dishes with incredible speed. George, who was watching her bewilderment, told you something about his previous request. He doesn't know if he has made any progress but he must have already known that there are serious problems in their city. You grinned and asked what he didn't know. What exactly did he know? George spoke in response. They only know that there is some order that wants to sacrifice the entire Beland Corps, and if this happens, then no one knows what that extraterrestrial god will do. Even if this extraterrestrial god does not have bad intentions, how will ordinary people react to this existence if the most fundamental predictions are made? You was surprised and said in response, if they really call him, then how will this order lead him to the sacrifice of an entire city? By sacrificing an item of such large size, his identity might be exposed to the whole world. Suddenly he became upset and realized that Aina had told him something about a new sacrifice, but only the order of Ash Chaos would obviously not be enough. Aina also said that they were being persecuted by some order called the Silent Tongue. So is it really them? Does he know anything about the Order of the Silent Tongue? George was dumbfounded. These words pierced him with surprise, and he thought that he really knew everything about this after this realization. He said in response that there were great risks, that they had attacked investigators from the Anti-Magic Bureau, and they had suffered great losses because of them. But their goals are unknown to them. If they have nothing to do with the city's sacrifices, then he is calm, and they can leave them for later. Suddenly, he pulled out a folding box, the lid on the table, and said that you said that he would owe him a favor, but he thought that it would be better to pay with something more material. You said in response with a frown, if he still accepted this, he would be obliged to help him find Dana. He should stay at home for now. Georgie asked again, does he refuse to accept him because he cannot help him? You replied that he may not be able to help, but he can ensure that the girl in the photographs is not a bad person at all. He knows that there is a conflict, and a very serious one, between the Order of Ash Chaos and the Order of the Quiet Tongue, and he gives them this information for free. George rose from his seat and said in response that he understood everything, and thanked him for the information he had provided. After that, he walked up to the tench finishing her food, and told her that they needed to get out of here, because they were done here. She asked him to return everything else with him, because she had not finished eating yet. You smiled and said in response that their cafe unfortunately does not have such services. 
These words upset the tench, and she looked sadly at the appearance of the dishes, when suddenly she came to finish them, which George was very surprised. He was very alarmed by her actions, because he had not expected such an appetite at all. After some time, you put on a cloak and announced on the street, persuading that if you go through the territory, there should be a library there. The central library houses approximately 750,000 books. Although he doesn't have a student card, he can turn into mist and exit through the toilet. Even less voltage will not help deal with the fog, let alone such a protective glass. He looked at the girls' rooms and said how good it was that he had someone else's face he entered the component and among the shelves of books realized that he had found everything. He took it in his hands and continued to say that he would first look for the records of the Order of Ash and Chaos. He opened the book and began to read. The Order of Ash Chaos once successfully summoned the great Lord of Ash. With his appearance, the entire earth shook, the oceans raged and problems arose everywhere. He would not be able to cope with such a spectacular appearance. Back then, the status in the Order of Ash Chaos was quite high, and they even managed to overthrow the kings. Having captured the army and killed the kings, they assumed dominion over all the gold and over all the women, which was the second plague in history. But their dominance did not last long, receiving a rebuff from the Order of the Star Crown, after which they all went underwater. This is how it happens. In ancient times they were a great order, but now they have become simply worthless. He was among this stack, picked up another book and spoke in a quiet language by Yar Willard. The book is a hundred years old, the author should have already died. Many orders exist thanks to God's gift, but in the end most cultists simply cannot share all the gifts among themselves. This is a problem in order to invite more people. Only by solving the problem of death will it be possible to force all people to invest their souls in their faith. Many have noted that people awarded the silent tongue are quite terrible, and their sacrifices differ from those of other orders. His greatness is described as winter, an extraterrestrial god, and winter is a sign of silence, the end and complete extinction. At the beginning of the sacrifice, the victim must already be dead, so they can succeed in silence and peace. But what about the soul of the deceased victim? And what will happen if they sacrifice the entire city? He was dumbfounded by the idea of such horror, and suddenly someone came up to her, addressed her as a guy named Arthur, and asked a question, did he take sick leave? He rubbed the back of his head, they called him, so they called him again, and he wondered, Arthur? It seems that the student he turned into is named Arthur. Does this mean he saw someone he knew? Byron approached him, and he realized that this was a person he really knew. He mentally asked, Byron, there is no way he can get used to this disciple's character, you replied. Yes, he had already recovered. One person asked him to meet him near the school, so he came here. Suddenly, he realized something and grabbed the bookcase, began to pretend, and said that he was feeling bad again. Teacher, he better go home and rest Byron responded that it was better for people with a fever not to go out in such rainy weather, especially when it was pouring outside. He continued to hold in his hand a book called The Quiet Tongue, which Byron noticed and asked him a question with curiosity. Is he also interested in science fiction? You replied, looking at him, he thinks these books are very interesting, and he knows that it is all fiction, but he still can't tear himself away, as if he were reading a current story. Byron noticed, but now in his math lessons he doesn't try at all. After his remark, you put the book back on the shelf and said, abruptly running past Byron, that he was already unwell and he wanted to leave here. Byron said in response that he would go with him, to which you replied, dumbfounded, okay, suddenly they went out into another room, and Byron asked him to come here. You replied that everything was fine, and said quietly that he did not expect to meet him here. Byron is most likely a mathematics teacher at this university or he is just a lecturer, and his assistant, whom he saw earlier, must also be studying here. Biden College is one of the best higher education institutions in the world. Being an experienced teacher here, he must interact with other people from different societies, and it is not surprising that he has many connections. Looking at how he behaves here, one can assume that no one at the university knows about his other identity. Byron returned with an umbrella in his hand and apologized for being delayed for a while, after which he announced that they could now go. It was raining outside, he opened the area and you, who was walking behind him in a raincoat, asked the question, why dress so warmly in such clothes? He watched him leave and wondered if this was some type of side effect, perhaps research into the practice of arcane magic and the use of relics. Was he supposed to pay for something in this way so that he could not endure the cold? 
His eyes frowned, and he said out loud that he had just read several books about mystical things, and among them was one that called the Silent Tongue. They mostly talked about some strange rituals and some other nonsense. Byron emotionlessly answered, Yes, which is why you looked in his direction, frowning, and moved away from him at quite a distance. Byron decided to talk to him that he had just looked into the office and checked that Arthur was now at home. He pulled out a piece of paper from his pocket and said, throwing it away with a bright beam of light, that he was an expert in the use of secret techniques, but unfortunately they had to be used only on powerless lamps, with which he was well acquainted. He removed all the parts so that no one could wake them up, so he has to answer two questions for him, who is he and why did he come here? You for a while, without checking anything with him, Byron continued to say that he could answer him now. At that moment, he clicked his finger, and the drops of water abruptly stopped in space, and he continued to speak, or his corpse answered for him a bright beam of light appeared above Byron's head, which you looked at with a surprised expression on your face, and suddenly the entire area lit up with this magic circle. After a moment, Byron asked him a question. Well, has he already decided? A red magic sign lit up on his hand. He was dumbfounded and said out loud, looking into the distance, This is an aura. White fog from the other shore and unforgettable light appeared in front of his face, and he spoke, gritting his teeth in anger, while calling on the extraterrestrial god. He felt this aura 100%. When he tried to kill the Lord of Ash, he only caused 50% halos of the Lord of Ash and 50% of white mist halos in that person. Bright sparks continued to spread everywhere, and at that moment the rain suddenly began to pour, and Byron said that he only temporarily switched to a quiet language. He mistakenly assumed the role of an investigator from the Anti-Magic Bureau and decided to involve him. He did not have any bad intentions against him. You looked to the side questioningly, and his body began to disappear into small and energy flows, and he asked a question, did he just say that the aura of an extraterrestrial god emanates from him? Was it because he used a fog spell? So this is how it works. He finally understood everything every time he uses his powers. They can feel his extraterrestrial aura George, and Aina must have felt it too. The girl who was on the observation deck also seems to be aware of what is happening. He is one of the finals of the Supreme God, and would like to know why he joined the Order of the Quiet Tongue. Byron spoke in response, This is the situation because he gave him several artifacts, and after receiving them, he wants to transfer them as a sacrifice to the High God. He no longer has any need for his spells. He only wants the Great God to stop watching anymore for his daughter you said in response, Everything is clear, the Great God has his own fears and gifts. Byron, he must tell him all the information regarding the Order of the Silent Tongue. Byron put a puzzled face on his face and asked him why he should do this. Is God interested in this? Yu's eyes glowed with a bright magical light, which caused Byron to subsequently tilt his head and say, okay, he understood everything. After this conversation, they went their separate ways, and Byron continued to say, let him forgive his old friend, but apparently he will have to become a traitor. Although his pride does not allow him to do such an act, but now he has something that is much more important than pride before him, he saw the form of Eve. After some time, you began to wonder why George hasn't been coming to the cafe lately. It turned out that the Order of the Quiet Tongue sacrifices everyone before conscription, and he must tell him this news, and also for Aina, who did not expect that the day before yesterday, as soon as she returned from the university, Aina would come to him with the news that the call will be repeated soon. And it doesn't matter to her what exactly this dark fruit she was talking about means. Suddenly a girl with bright blue eyes called him several times, stopping near the cash register, and asked sir, can he hear her? She was talking about how she got your best friend, and she doesn't know anyone else about it except him. You spoke back with a smile on his face, since they are best friends, she should talk to her well and solve the problem together, and he is confident that they can work out all the problems. It's late, she should come home quickly. The girl abruptly returned angrily and thanked him for this, saying that she had already left. He looked at the phone and said, It's now 10 hours to 50 minutes. The call should begin soon. The time on the clock was 12 hours 23 minutes at night. He silently worked against the clock and wondered with bewilderment why nothing was coming. Did something really happen to the Ain? The time is 11.30 a.m. Nearby, hooded cultists, as well as Aina and the king, approached Dr. Norn, who was being discussed on the half-body, and wondered what happened. The king asked why he died. One of the guys began to explain to him, speaking in a hurry, he really died, he saw everything with his own eyes, 
the doctor killed people from the Order of the Quiet Tongue. The king noticed Aina's behavior and wondered, looking at her more closely, that she behaved so cold-bloodedly while still a child. She's already starting to surprise him. Suddenly, he began to shout. The great Lord of Ash sees everything that is happening in this world, and thanks to the power that he will give them, their order will become the most powerful in the world, the guy said. Two months ago, everyone convinced him of their power, and tonight the Order of Ash Chaos is regaining its former greatness. Each of them can achieve the glory that they are warriors about. The head turned a terrifying look and said that very soon their offerings would be there. But before he could finish speaking, one of the guys grabbed his throat and those around him, who were paying attention to him in fear, began to shout, High Priest, the guy was gasping for breath and muttered, High Priest, after which he fell to the floor on his face, and those around him screamed, He's dead, how did it happen? Horrible, the king shouted that they did not need to be afraid of this, everything would go according to plan tonight. The order of the quiet tongue did not have God's blessing, and very soon there would be no consequences for any of them. Suddenly someone opened the door. There was a dangerous guy in the room and said, High priest, the guards outside are dead. Several of them were killed. Several were missing. And they could only contact half of them. But they were not advancing the enemy. The king realized that they needed to get out of the house as soon as possible and shouted to bring out his consequences. Suddenly he looked sharply to the side and suggested to the guy that they should do this and escort him out so that he can leave here. They need to head to the bank of the Tevu River. They need to ensure his safety. After that, he turned to Aina, grabbed her hand and said that about her, she should come with him, there is still a lot that she needs to learn, and today will be her first lesson, she looked him in the eyes and asked, and they will go. He replied, they need to look for God's messenger. Suddenly everyone turned towards the door, where the pouring rain was visible, and Aina wondered, it's so rainy outside, why is it so quiet here? Something is about to start, she turned around sharply, and in this moment many bright flashes of light appeared, which destroyed some parts of the premises, and also many guys in hoods fell to the ground. She was confused by everything that was happening. She grabbed her chest and said, squinting her eyes, that she was in great pain. Suddenly she took a step, opened her eyes in surprise, and mentally said, Lord of Ash, Master, Aina must find God's ring suddenly, she realized, waking up on the ground in wounds and abrasions, that she was alive, and perhaps it was because she had trained her body. She woke up under a stone slab, which pinned her legs, and realized that everything hurt and her bones were broken. She thinks of doing this movement manually to pull herself out of this place, saying that she must leave here. She took a few more steps and made a loud crash, after which she was found to be the cause of all the destroyed slabs. She saw someone's cut-off hand and realized with fear that it was the hand of the high priest, but where was he himself? She must run away from here, the print on the back is just on fire, and it needs to live up to those requirements. She will definitely find God's messenger as she ran outside. She heard many screams of people screaming for help, fear, and hopelessness. Meanwhile, while you were in the garden asking questions, could this anti-magic bureau begin to act? If that's the case, then he doesn't even know what they did to Aina. When they knocked on the door, she came to his head, and it turned out that she was just a stray cat. Meanwhile, while she was approaching the coffee shop, he continued to think it was almost four, and there was no point in waiting any longer. If this was connected with the anti-magic bureau, then maybe he would contact George tomorrow and find out everything, but now he needed to rest. Aina, who had already approached the front door with coffee, finally spoke, she came her long hair stood on end, and behind her on the roof of the house, there were many people against the backdrop of cloaks. One of the guys with bright green eyes held a brightly glowing sword in his hand, and told the contact that they were acting quickly, the sun was already rising. Whoever dares to observe the order of the quiet tongue will declare war on them, their order has already voiced all its demands and no one dares to betray the supreme god Aina lay on the ground in the rain, having been attacked. The cat came up to her and examined her. The cat made a meow. One of the guys was surprised by its existence and said with embarrassment, it's very cute. After that, the other guy sharply shook his head and asked him to get ready, because he had an important mission and did not have time to play with the cat. The cat became wary. At that moment, the door at the entrance to the coffee shop suddenly began to light up with a bright light, and the guy in the hood was dumbfounded with horror. Smoke was visible in the air, and after that emanating rays of light, which is why the guy got angry and told who the mysterious owner of the establishment was. He thought that there were two extraterrestrial auras, and both were very strong at this moment. 
the sharp limb of some creature of pain in the ground, and this monster of incredible size stopped in front of the guys. They all began to shake in surprise. One reacted to what was happening with his silence with a stunned look, and the other said what kind of monster this was that Aura arose from this creature. She managed to hide in the rain, and this is one of the pets of the Lord of Ash, the family of Chaos. One of them shouted that they needed to split up and run outside as quickly as possible. The guy looked into the distance and spoke with such light that the creature must move slowly, but before he could finish his sentence, the death of this monster was revealed right behind him, and a moment later his blood was shed. Another guy said, looking back, that this monster is very fast, and at that moment he grabbed it with transparent shoots and destroyed it, piercing it through. The other sinister smiled and said, It followed these two in the opposite direction. He has a chance to escape. But after thinking through these thoughts, the same monster appeared in front of him, which was completely unexpected, and the guy asked in fear what was happening. At that very moment, he was divided into two parts by the transparent claws of the creature. One of the guys remained in the living, who hid behind the wall. He tried to catch his breath while sitting there, and said that this monster is too fast, and he thinks that it will be completely useless to run, so it is not so. But he did not have time to finish this sentence, when he took his gaze to the side and saw a brightly shining the monster's eye is right next to him. Faces. After this situation, there was a loud scream. Aina continued to remain on the ground in the rain, raindrops enveloping her body. She woke up and said that she was very hot. At that moment, she opened her eyes and saw the monster's open fangs falling from the control panel. She became very wary and screamed. It's the same monster she backed away and leaned against the wall. The monster's face trembled and looked towards her, when suddenly she extended her hand and shouted to this monster not to come near her. But the monster growled very loudly in response and a magical sign appeared in the death of this creature, after which Aina formed a bright flame, which was very loudly directed towards the monster, and destroyed it completely. She looked into the distance and mentally said that it was she who did this, and she thought that she could control this flame in the world where the Lord of Ash lives. There is a golden fire that can burn the whole world. Since the beginning of the existence of all humanity, more than twenty worlds have already burned, and this fire still continues to ignite until the end of all life comes. This is the fire that created the destruction. Bright fiery streams of energy dissolved around with an incredibly loud sound. She closed her eyes and said that she must hold on and not give up, because there was only a little time left and she would kill this monster. Just a little longer the flames continued to spread, she looked away and saw someone's paw near her. It was again the same monster who realized that she was the chosen overlord of Ash, and it seemed that she had suffered greatly, so if she was not taken care of now, then it might be too late. A cat appeared in front of Aina, lit up with a magical light and looked into her eyes, after which she abruptly returned and thought, What's the difference? You sharply opened the door and shouted, Who is making such sounds there? Suddenly he saw a cat meowing in front of him, which made him grin and say, Of course he wasn't talking about that. His cute cat he goes and looks further. The sounds resembled the growl of some brother of a monster. Suddenly he noticed Aina's sitting body near the wall, which made him very wary. He ran closer to her and said, Apparently she was attacked, which means the call had failed after all. She has serious wounds, but she doesn't need to be afraid, because he will definitely save her after some time. He began to tell the cute cat that there was a monster roaming nearby, and if it met this monster, then he needed to talk about it. Fine. The cat looked at him questioningly in response, and meanwhile he took off Aina's clothes and said to himself that he was doing this to save her and only to save her. He has absolutely no such intentions. He just wants to save her. All for her good when he undressed her and covered her in front of him, he began to bleed from his socks at her beautiful appearance, and he continued to hold himself for the fact that she told him thank you, he is not doing anything wrong, it is all for her sake suddenly something alerted him. He noticed her redness and realized that her wounds were of their own accord after some time, the clock showed ten hours forty minutes. Aina, who woke up under the blanket, said last night, she lost consciousness near the cafe where that messenger was waiting. She remembered how, naked, she hugged his waist, and he said that she should have a good cry, he could stand it, she couldn't be afraid for him. She pulled the sleeve of her sweater off her shoulder and said in surprise that all her wounds had healed and it must all be thanks to him, he took care of her. She sat on the edge of the bed, looked towards the wall and continued to say that this means that God's messenger lives here, pretending to be an ordinary person. 
Meanwhile, Yu was sitting in one of the rooms at the table and looking out the window. Aina came up behind him and thanked him for what was happening. He turned to her with dark bruises under his eyes and asked a question. She woke up. Does she want something to eat? She looked at him in surprise and asked again, is he all right? He replied that he simply did not sleep the whole night and everything was fine. And she walked past him with a study that this means that the messenger of God also spat. She seems to know nothing about him. What secrets does he hide? He continued to finish his dish with an incredibly clear expression on his face. Yesterday he was afraid that that monster might come back again, and so he was on alert all night. Standing in one place for a long time and trying not to fall asleep is much more exhausting than playing a whole night on the phone. Early in the morning, he ran back to the library to check out the clue Byron had given him. Having convinced himself of everything, he immediately went to the Anti-Magic Bureau to inform them about the Order of the Quiet Tongue, but the employees of this Anti-Magic Bureau tried to convince him that he was making a mistake, that this was an ordinary bureau, and that they were not doing any supernatural things. They told him about it in such a way that he really thought he was in the wrong place. But thanks to the fact that he is President George, they finally believed that he was not a drunk, a normal and sober person. When he returned, he began to prepare breakfast for Aina. Then he realized that he was incredibly tired and was about to faint, so he decided that the day after tomorrow he would immediately go to bed. Aina sat down opposite him to have breakfast, and he told her that now was just the time for her to tell him all about what happened last night. She stood up and shouted to him with seriousness. Okay, he said with a smile in response that she didn't have to act so seriously. She could eat and show him what was happening at the same time. After a while, he thought, the monster that Aina told him about, probably about the eggs that the Baron gave him, demanded him for a second. Aina looked at him in surprise and asked again, is he sure everything is okay? He looks kind of unhealthy, he replied that everything was fine, but suddenly realized that he really wasn't here. She said, Mr. Envoy, she wanted to talk to him about what happened in the church. During this time, a lot of events happened, and she could not forget the words that the high priest said to her. He said that the things that are happening in the order are much more complicated than they seem, and he is trying his best to set things right. But the order cannot fail to exist, otherwise who else will support life in orphanages? There are a lot of people associated with the order, so it's very difficult to decide what the right thing to do is. But she will try to stop the sacrifices and will try to stop this persecution, but she doesn't fully understand everything yet and is just thinking about it. Everything in this world may seem simple, but in reality it is not. People need strength and faith to achieve their goals. If she has more time, she thinks that in the future she will understand everything. You smiled and said in response that it seemed to him that she had already been through a lot. In his opinion, Aina has normal behavior that was caused by improper upbringing. He is surprised by how quickly she is growing up. When the first summoning happened, she just found out every now and then that during the second summoning, she showed that she could be brave when she wasn't required to be. Now she has already begun to talk seriously about everything. Such rapid growth suggests that she is an unusual girl. Was she really born in the blood or flesh of some witch? The cat came up to their table, and Aina said with delight, What a cute cat, how does this called? Together they went down to the floor to the cat and thought for a moment, after which they decided and answered that it was Kola. The cat purred because of such pleasant attention, you turned to Aina and said that she could hug it, because this cat is very obedient. She smiled back and said that for now she would just go and sleep. He replied, Yes, she should go and rest. At that moment, she nevertheless reached out to the cat with her hand, but suddenly this creature growled strongly, turning into a monster, which greatly alarmed her, as well as you herself, and they were both dumbfounded. Shen Yu jumps out from behind the wall and asks Aina in surprise what happened. Did the cat scratch her? Is she injured? She sits pressed against the wall and points at this finger and exclaims, This just scared her. This suddenly became very scary but the cat is already sitting at a distance and looking at him with drawn cute eyes. Yu comes closer to it and, stroking it, is surprised, but it's so cute. Then he strokes the cat and mentally looks at it. If he scratches or bites Aina, he will put it in the oven and bake a delicious cake from it. Do you understand him? He needs to rest now. They can play well here. Aina observes these events when it is the messenger's pet, which means it must know about his true appearance. This monster can't harm her. Suddenly the cat is on her, and she immediately exclaims, Messenger, she grabs his hand and says she wants to go with him to his room. 
Suddenly, she hugs him even tighter, and he embarrassedly says that, of course, it's possible. They can read, for example, different books. It's cloudy and cloudy outside. George walks down the street and looks. This man has really studied the whole situation. He can see everything that happens, including things in two sections. All the inhabitants of Beland are ordinary pawns for him. He simply shows everyone where to go. If he had to face this person, he would have to suffer terribly. Suddenly, Su Lin approaches him. She chews a cookie and tells her uncle that he has had enough of complaining all the time. He talks too much. Better he should say what was written in those books that he found in the library. He explains that it's only about how the order of the quiet tongue began to slowly lose power. This information is special. This time they go to this person to help him with something. She should be faster. After she finishes eating, she must follow him. Lynn clarifies she can't come in with him. George explains that it is bad luck to enter a cafe with food. This could be bad for the owner's reputation. The owner of this cafe will be very unhappy. The cafe has a very pleasant atmosphere and good lighting. Su Lin holds the menu in her hands and looks at her to calm down. She must show good behavior this time, otherwise she will have to pay. George sits with his eyes closed. What's wrong with this cat? After all, he never harmed cats. Suddenly, the cat begins to hiss angrily. Shen Yu walks up to him and holds two cups of coffee in his hands, waiting to see if they are happy with the information he gave them. George explains that they are leaving today. But the power of defeat should not be underestimated. They can request the creation of a new order in one evening, and when they dare to attack the Anti-Magic Bureau, this already suggests that they are ready for anything. But he doesn't know how much it will cost them, but they wanted him to personally help them with this operation. Yu frowns and exclaims that he refuses he wonders what he's even thinking about. He doesn't want to die, it seems he must make them leave. First, a small flame appears in his hand, and then a fiery aura begins to emanate from him, and with burning eyes he says that people are crossing the boundaries of greed. Su Lin sees this and gets angry. George also looks at her and realizes that this cannot be, she also reacts poorly to the release of energy, then he takes her by the clothes and lifts her off the ground. George gets up from the table and, bowing, apologizes, apparently he really crossed the line. He realizes that he is asking too much. They will leave immediately. But Shen Yu explains that he had better calm her down otherwise, she will be ready to attack him right now. Soon Aina appeared and asked the messenger, Have the guests left? He turns to her and explains with a smile, Yes, they have already left. It just wasn't the right time, so he asked her to hide. There won't be any surprises today so she can rest here. He realizes something under his shirt and thinks that perhaps more people will die today. He doesn't know where, but he has the feeling that everything is going according to his plan. Everything seems exciting. It's raining heavily in the industrial part of the city, and people in formal suits and dark blue robes are fighting desperately. The rain is accepted, and the man in the blue robe exclaims, the main thing is to kill him. That is, the leader, no one will wake them up for this George waves his sword and glance, although their attack should have been sudden, but they still managed to prepare. They used invisibility techniques to hide from them, and also summoned international monsters. If we take into account the fact that they attacked the investigators when they just left the building, then this only says one thing. There is a spy among them. He turns on the headphones and says that they need to quickly turn off the invisibility technique. They have a maximum of two hours left. They need to hurry to find a place to hold the summoning. They must motivate the cultists. Then he looks up and wonders, where is Yale Willard hiding? When he saw the information in the library, he couldn't bear to see the sight. He did not expect that they would see each other again under such circumstances. The rain continues, falling to the ground in large drops, and Manti's monsters with red glowing eyes appear. Su Lin flies past this, and waving his sword, cuts off the monster's paw. After she lands and the mantis freezes in place, Lin points at this sword and shows this decline. The monster immediately falls to the ground and a magical portal appears around it. She looks at it carefully and energy begins to evaporate from the mantis. When all that remained was parts and slime, Su Lin noticed that the Gayati sword was a very powerful weapon. But the price of this power is too high. For each use, the owner loses one bone after that she screams in pain, her rib. But she must move on. Suddenly, a bullet flies into her chest. A man with short hair points a gun at her and says it's no use. 
but Su Lin explains that one of the advantages of the Anti-Magic Bureau is that special blood was injected into her body, which allows her to almost completely avoid injuries from conventional weapons. The man is armed with a long sword, just like her. They walk towards each other, but when they come into contact with a weapon, they run past. Lin stops abruptly and turns, leaning on the man, turning his back. She rips his arm off, lands, and then stabs him in the back again. A monster appears from the men's mouth, which turns into a huge caterpillar. It opens its mouth and manifests itself towards her. She puts her sword forward and shows this fall, but it only shakes, and Su Lin exclaims that this is not enough. Then she gets a serious expression on her face and screams again for it to fall down the huge caterpillar shakes and finally falls to the ground. Lin was relieved to think that today she only performed ribs. She was lucky. She then supplies a special antidote, K-232, which can quickly repair all wounds. She injects it into her hand, and at that moment George and people in black sunglasses approach her. Su Lin explains that she has already dealt with the monsters, they can move on. He watches her and notes that he suspected all along that she liked to go it alone. They are partners, after all, she immediately disappeared when this battle took place. But Lin turns around and leaves, saying that they don't have time to talk, they need to find a priest. George just watches her and says that he obeys the officer in her person. He also thinks that newcomers always grow up completely. She says the only C-rank investigator in Nolan is away on business. If that monster appears there, it will be difficult for them. George thinks this guy Yale Willard is almost immortal. He seems to have no other choice. If such an opportunity arises, he will have to kill him himself, no matter what the cost. The rain continues and Willard holds black stones and a cross in his hand. He thinks that the whole of Beland has already turned into a special fortress. And in this territory, it will be easiest to contact God. His name is on the lips of all people, his voice resounds in all their hearts. A guide in the wilderness, a singer of truth, a giver of unbreakable serenity to the world, their peacemaker. He brings him the gift of a cross, which will shine with dim fire for centuries. He bought it from the depths of the void. He must answer his call. He asks him only one thing, that he send eternal peace to all these mortals. Clouds gather around the portal, from where an unforgettable light shines. People in formal suits fall to the ground and try to cover their ears with their hands. George looks at the portal opening and notes that a summoning is coming. Of all, only the two of them can freely move the bracket of this terrible element. What are all these monsters that crawl from within? The portal becomes even larger and around the edges are these wooden silhouettes of unknown monsters. A light rain continues to fall along the street, and the unforgettable light is on in the cafe. Shen Yu spat on the chair with his mouth open. A cat sitting at the table realizes that someone recommended an extraterrestrial god, but when this is outlined, I am surprised to note that Yu has disappeared. Then the cat turns and jumps in fear. Aina sees this ahead and asks if the messenger has returned yet, but immediately runs away hinting that she should not take such an approach. The magical portal continues the process of settlement over the city, as Yal Willard watches wearily. George finds his gaze and exclaims that he sees him. He thinks that from here he can use the third sword technique. Then a small blade appears in his hand and he throws it forward. Willard is holding a magic stone in his hands when suddenly the blade strikes him and passes right through him. He bursts into blood, but does not die. George sees this and notes that even such a strong attack could not kill him. He's still too far away. With the help of the second sword technique, he can finish him off. But Yal Willard can easily deflect this or dodge it. Suddenly Su Lin grabs the dagger, but he stops her and shows her to finally calm down. It's no use, they're already late. She tries something for him, but with a sharp frown she says she'll stop talking. George listens, and then notices that the sound has disappeared. He looks up, where someone's silhouette can be seen. George realizes that this is the god of peace Shen Yu floats in the air, wearing a blue suit and mask. He thinks that with this mask, he just looks perfect like the one who was described in the book called The Silent Tongue. So he won't be exposed now the show can begin. But suddenly he realized that for some reason, he still hadn't landed Yu clenches his teeth firmly. But it looks like he shouldn't panic, the main thing is to find his footing. A magical platform appears below him, and he begins to notice that this is actually pretty good. A little further from him, on the same platform, Yale Willard is kneeling and pronouncing, a conductor in the wilderness, a singer of truth, giving the world indestructible serenity, their peacemaker. 
He brings him into the gifts of the cross, which will forever shine with a dim fire. In return, all he asks is that he grant them eternal rest. Shen Yu hears this and wonders eternal peace. They think exactly as it is written in the book. He recalls that according to the source, each extraterrestrial god learned to endow his adherents with different qualities or abilities. The god in peace, which personifies with cold, learned to grant eternal peace to his adherents. But the book says that eternal rest does not mean that they will die. They will simply live according to the will of their god. They will lose all feelings and emotions and will simply exist. No pain, no suffering, no desires, no goals, no feelings, no joy, no happiness, no love. Is there any meaning to such an existence? Yu replies, he will accept the unfortunate mortal's sacrifice. A silver cross appears in front of him, and he understands that since he is in the guise of an extraterrestrial god, he must accept its offering, which means that this thing now belongs to him. And this will also return to him when the call is over. Then he added that as far as the mortal's request was concerned, he refused it. Yale Willard hears this and is horrified. Shen Yu muses that he seems to have mastered how to go down and up, so he can leave here before this summoning ends. Last time, he unleashed a little Georgia magic and didn't dare fight him at all. And now, during the conversion, magic simply oozes from his body. He said it in a way he had never said before, so it was unlikely that anyone would attack him at all, and now he can finally refuse these stupid sectarians. Suddenly his eyes light up red, and he declares, firstly, because they hurt Aina, secondly, because they are threatening the city, they are not coming from him, he forever refuses to give them eternal rest. Willard heard this and began to speak. But immediately it is repeated a large number of times with bewilderment, why? Yal Willard ages even more and weakly asks why. His platform begins to dissolve into the air, and he flies down like a stone. He watches this and wonders about the situation. Did he fall? Well, if that's the case, then he doesn't care. He didn't like him from the very beginning. Then he starts playing with drops of rainwater and notes that there shouldn't be much time. He'd better wait here a little. Then he exclaims that time would really stand still. He looks at one of the buildings and hears. Willard screaming that the great god has refused him. He refused him, he did not become reliable to him, great god of peace. He must grant him eternal peace, eternal peace, Shen Yu suggests that there must be their shelter below. His time has come to an end. He wishes well to all those inside the raindrop remains hanging lonely in the air. And finally Yu exclaims that their departure is a bogey George is standing on the ground with his head down. Apparently things didn't go as the silent tongue cultists thought. They were all just very wrong. Their selfish attempt to call on an extraterrestrial god and ask him to grant eternal peace to all residents of the city ended in failure. Then he says that all of them, people, do not think at all about their surroundings and do not care at all about what they think. Suddenly, he exclaims, this sound seems to have returned. George turns on his headphones and announces that the extraterrestrial god has disappeared. They must catch all the people. Su Lin runs to read it, and no matter how much she monitors it, there is no way he can stay with the young people. He then addresses the men in suits and reveals that he will help her catch all the cultists. The high priest is too strong for them, so he will deal with him alone. After this, he walks down the street and says that from what he saw, it can be assumed that the high priest may not have died, but he is seriously wounded. He must have hidden somewhere. Then he stops and sees Yala Willard, who is leaning his back against the wall. He, turning to him, says that now he must say goodbye to his friend. But when he pokes it in the zone, he is very surprised. What is it? This is not Yale Willard. Shen Yu comes to the room and wonders if the information he received from him turned out to be false. Yu sits opposite the cat and, looking at this, says, Yes, he thought the same thing like that. He also didn't sleep all night. Why is he stroking it and wondering how this cat just got here? Shen Yu again tells the cat with a smile that he was very busy at that time and completely forgot about it. But now he can help. The cat meows loudly and jumps into his arms. He holds it and thinks since he doesn't like it, then he can just buy some nice food. One day Aina comes into the room and addresses him, the messenger. It's time for her to leave. People from the order were looking for her. They said that they needed her very much now. The high priest somehow miraculously survived your decision. He said that this order never needed her help, not to mention the children. Shen Yu listens to her and wonders, so it will finally be possible to sleep on the bed. After that, he laughingly tells her that she can still stay if she wants. Aina explains enthusiastically, right? 
but Yu mentally notes that he simply does not want to seem impolite. Then he asked with excitement what the name of the order was. It seems like damn sad chaos, what is she going to do about it? She explains that she must first talk to the high priest so that he changes the structure and goals of their order. And the most important thing is to find out what other participants think about it. Shen Yu smiles and replies that it is a good decision. He wishes her luck. Aina bows and thanks him for saving her and taking care of her. She frowns and thinks that she will definitely tell the whole world about him, so that as many people as possible will know what a strong and wise person he is Yu enters the cafe and notes that he is very tired and needs to get some sleep. The next day, the silver cross falls to the floor and hits the surface several times. He steps on this one and gets very angry. The cat is watching this in surprise. Shen Yu takes the cross in his hands and notes that he does not understand how to use it at all. It seems to him that the time has come to recharge with new forms. But even the knowledge that can be obtained in the library is not unlimited. But this is not so important. First he must try out his new opportunity. After returning, he felt that something had changed in his left hand, as if some kind of energy was accumulating there. He thought about it, and then realized that he had really acquired the ability to freeze objects then you concentrates, and, while holding it by hand, exclaims, You must freeze a cup of coffee that was about to fall, so the table stops in place and the coffee hangs in the air. Shen Yu is very surprised and exclaims that this really works, but the cup of coffee suddenly falls, and he noticed that it seems that this is only for a while. The cat comes up to him with a smile and jumps from behind. He turns to it and wonders what happened. Then he points the finger of his left hand at it and exclaims that this must be noticed the cat stops moving and flies past him, hitting the glass. It falls and resentfully buttons its paws with red socks. Yu looks at this and asks if the cat is okay. But it turns sharply on him and soon lashes out. Shen Yu points his hand at him again and motions him to freeze. The cat makes a few more objects, pounces on him, but each time misses and hits the wall. After some time, he continues to do this and catches the cat. Yu then turns it around and says that's enough. Otherwise, it will damage all the furniture. He hugs the cat, who has already received several bumps and bruises. Yu pats it on the head and says that Coke needs to stop playing around. Then he goes up to the bookshelf and says that he still needs to properly learn his new power. Just don't play around again. After this, books begin to fall from the shelf, and Shen Yu repeats three times to make it stop. He soon learns that firstly, the freeze only lasts five seconds. Secondly, it is impossible to freeze air or other invisible things. Everything works only on components. Thirdly, you can only freeze whole food items. Fourthly, it is important that the left hand points directly at the object, otherwise the aim may be lost. Fifthly, the distance does not matter. The main thing is that the target is not blocked by anything. Sixth, to use refreeze on an item, you must first wait until the previous effect wears off, then simply use it again. It is impossible to freeze the surface of the frozen object. His entire head is covered with bruises and contusions when suddenly the door opens and a brown-haired girl with blue eyes asks Master. He is here. She looks into the room and abruptly motions for her to freeze after that. He quickly straightens his hair, and the girl asks if he suddenly got into trouble. What did the owner just do? He smiles and invites her to sit down first, and then he will pour her coffee. The girl agrees and replies, okay. An hour later, she runs away with tears in her eyes and thanks him, but it's time for her to go Shen Yu watches her and also says goodbye to her. Then he thoughtfully noted that when he froze her, she still noticed how he straightened his hair. If when freezing, the objects located next to him change, then a person with a high ick will clearly notice this. Cola comes up to him, and he props his head with his hand that the main thing is to be able to think. The cat tilts its head and looks at him sweetly. I go into a coffee shop in Georgia and say, The owner is Shen. They would like some comment here, if he doesn't mind. Yu replies with a smile, of course, but he has to keep an eye on them. He turns around and sees Su Lin holding bags of food and smiling. George said that they would spend a lot today. Shen Yu tells them that they must tell what happened this time. He comes up to him and notices, apparently from him, and really then nothing can be hidden. He wanted to talk about Yale Willard. George works for Yu and asks far away if he has to sit like that. Shen Yu sits at the next table and explains that he just likes it better. What will they drink? He replies that he will have a latte. Su Lin explains that she wants to try something new. She will be savvy. Yu then asks what will they eat. 
She replies that they don't need anything. She's not that hungry today. In response to this, he smiled at the girl on top of her. Lin asks with excitement why he is looking at her like that. But Shen Yu just says that then he will go and make coffee for them. They should have waited a little. George licks his lips and turns to Su Lin, reminding her that he told her that she didn't need to bring food here. Working with Master Shen is even more difficult than fighting with elements of that order. She sighs and answers, then when it was necessary to deal with the rest, he sent her there first. Did he want all the credit to go to her? He said that when she takes office, she will become a B-rank ranger. The main thing is that she stays alive. If she survives, she will be guaranteed in a rank. She just needs to practice more. All he does is just help her gain experience. Su Lin does not turn to him and thanks him. Then he came to her and asked if she had arrested all the holders of the orders and what were her feelings everyone had different feelings during the first hearing. She sits pitifully and says that she remembered her father. George, that my father, who once reached his father, has nothing to do with her. She should not think about it. But now, on the contrary, it compensates for the damage to all those people who suffered then. But Lin interrupts him and says that she doesn't want to discuss this now. He looks at her silently when he hears this. Shen Yu puts the coffee cup on the table and sits down next to him, asking them to tell him about their friend, Yale Willard. He seems to remember him. He was a priest in the Order of the Quiet Tongue. George reports that he is an extremely dangerous man. He, Willard, and another friend of theirs, the three of them created their team a long time ago. Their goal was to search for magical objects lost throughout the world. He and the other one were very young back then, but Yalu Willard was already over 100 years old, so naturally he was their leader. They did a lot and found a large number of different treasures, rumors even began to circulate about them. But then they didn't want to limit themselves to just that, so their team broke up, and everyone went their own way. Yale Willard is a man whose heart is filled with madness. On the outside, he always paints a picture of a calm person. But he knows that many scary and foolish things are studied in science. You listens and clarifies, is he strong? George explains with a smile what is possible for them, no matter who is strong or not. One could say that he was his teacher. It was he who taught him the skills and techniques of combat behavior. Su Lin is there and asks if Willard is strong or not. He turns to her and creepily says that if she meets him face to face, then she better leave. She quietly answers him, okay. He continues to say that Shen Yu may not even understand this because Yale Willard managed to change his appearance, and even if he meets him, it is not a fact that he will be able to recognize him. He then added that he came to Mr. Shen to clarify something. The priest who ran the Order of the Quiet Tongue was not Willard. Was there really a mistake in the reports? Yu immediately thinks, because Byron loved his daughter so much, how could he lie to him? Or maybe there is something else that he doesn't even know. After that, his brain may have actually made an error in the reports. Even he couldn't prove it. It is likely that the Order of the Quiet Tongue had its first two priests in Baland. George thanks him and exclaims, he got it. This will really help them after that, he bows, tilting Su Lin slightly and repeats that they are very grateful to him. Yu embarrassedly says that there is no need for such pleasantries, they are just friends. After a while, the city street is empty, and George tells Lin that she should be more careful in future. He had already arranged everything, he was spying in the anti-magic bureau of the Zat, they would soon forget him. But before I get personal, there's one more thing. Siu Lin interrupts him and says that she understood everything, he shouldn't worry about her. But does he have anything else he wants to tell her? George thinks after he answers, there is something about her father. He is familiar with his business. But she clarifies whether it is necessary to tell them about this. George continues anyway, her father was a hero who fought against various monsters. But because he didn't want her mother to die, he took the wrong road and became a sign of the order. Being a hero, he renounced previous obstacles and harmed many people, but since he was still her father, she was the most painful of all. All these years she spent money on those who suffered from her father. All this time she is trying to correct his mistake, so he thinks that this is enough. He just wants to tell her that she and her father are completely two different people, and besides, she is also one of the recognized criminals. So she doesn't have to pay for all this. Su Lin listens to him, and then Nakmurov answers, they only knew for a few days, and she didn't think at all that he knew her so well. What he experienced, read some lectures to her, only irritates her. They are partners with him, but not friends, and certainly not relatives. With the power of words she passes by and goes forward. 
George scratches his temple and realizes that he has ruined everything again. He couldn't even hold back because he knew how it would all end. Maybe it's even better this way. When evening comes, dark clouds do not appear. A program about slats is displayed on the screen. George sits in front of the TV and repeats. He shouldn't have told her that. Only close people can help in this situation. The Anti-Magic Bureau took good care of this. They deliberately gave him a girl as a partner, which may cause her sympathy. Next to him, a small little Su Lin who frowned and put her knife forward. The effect of the second blade technique may shorten your life, but this can be corrected later. But when using the first blade technique, a person gradually forgets about relatives. Many details make it clear to him that he once had a child and a wife. But their connection has long since broken down. Except for an extraterrestrial god, no one has learned to change this, even calling oracles that way. I wonder if Master Shen might be influenced by the same magical artifacts. He remembers how Shen Yu said with a smile that such pleasantries are unnecessary, they are just friends. George continues to speculate, or he has made a friend who will never die. Suddenly the voice of a man is heard from his ears, exclaiming that they have checked everything he immediately gets up, and the man with the headphones exclaims that Yale Willard was in front of them, the whole time George replies that he already understood that. The man can tell someone else at headquarters that Willard is now with him. Yale Willard stands in front of him and smiles friendly. Shen Yu hugs the cola and looks forward carefully. A zombie is coming to the cafe. He notes that from the looks of it, it doesn't look like a kidnapper. The zombie notices him and Cola fastens her mouth with her paws. Its ugly six gray tentacles appear from the zombie's mouth and reach towards you. He turns into fog and the zombie's tentacles don't reach him. Then he gradually approached and, pointing to this finger, exclaimed to stop it the zombie freezes in place and Shen Yu says it lasts for about five seconds. If this attempt is to attack, he will have to quickly disappear and hide the zombie follows him with his gaze, but Yu turns into fog and exclaims, at that moment, but the zombie doesn't do anything, and then he wonders, is it not attacking? The zombie sits down near the wall and cries, and this suits Kolya and is surprised to work for Shen Yu. He enters a state of fog and notices that the zombie has been attacked by the auras of an extraterrestrial god. But Kola should be kept away from him. It seems to be afraid of nothing. He sees the zombie put his head down and write, realizing that he couldn't help him, and so he committed suicide. They dared to attack him. Could they also attack George and Su Lin? It's dark and cloudy outside, and it's also raining. George turns to Yale Willard and asks how he was able to get into their office, and how he got through security for so many years without being noticed. He explains that this is his gift, as one of the leaders of the Quiet Tongue. This inner alms that God has given him over the past thousands of years. George notes that after the incident with the Order, he had a great chance to escape, but he decided to come to him. Willard explains that he once asked him why he wanted to be an investigator if no one would thank him for what he does anyway. He then responded that people should always do the necessary things, even if it seems pointless. He recently realized that they are almost the same. This may sound strange, but while George is breathing, he cannot breathe calmly. This is a target point distortion relic. This can attract the entire surrounding space with any flight path. In other words, all his accessories are powerless against him. George looks and with a bored expression replies that he doesn't care what he wants to do with his documents. But he is annoyed and Willard thinks they are similar. Suddenly he suddenly lunges at him, a small blade appears in his hand and he tries to attack him. He also thinks that the street is probably full of his people, but he can't stay here. Then George jumps from the balcony of the house and sees people in robes standing below, with a pentagram glowing brightly next to the famous ones. He noticed that everything was going as expected. He then opens up the zone and deflects people's shots. George peeks out slightly from behind the area and then points a blade in their direction, from which energy begins to emanate. It appears directly into a crowd of people in robes. Someone shouts that they must grab him immediately George looks back and the rapid movement kills one person. Then he catches the dagger and starts drawing with them. But he also says that he has lost too much energy. Now he has the item. Yal Willard's voice is heard, saying that he cannot escape. He came here specifically to kill him. How can he expect him to let him escape easily? George replies that he thinks nothing is impossible. Willard smiles again, looking at him with a bored look. Suddenly Yale Willard declares that Byron betrayed him, me, who gives him credit, are most to blame for everything, and the only one who remains alive is him. 
For the sake of extermination, he demanded to openly revive Byron Hart, because only she could help him. In order to destroy the land, he needed the help of a high-class sorcerer. George looks at him and wonders why he is yelling so loudly. Does he want everyone in the Anti-Magic Bureau to hear him yell Willard, added with a smile that he wanted to deal with him on his own after the sacrifice, but it turns out that he had already betrayed him before. Apparently, his daughter's life is not that important to him. But George stops him and exclaims, he shouldn't rush to conclusions his daughter is the most important thing for him. Willard then continues to smile and says maybe he just doesn't trust him, he thinks George is just crazy or something. After that, he begins to run towards him and tries to attack. But George turns to Anda and tells him to help him give something to Su Lin. He should tell her not to look for that person for the sake of a place, and he should tell her to quickly contact the Anti-Magic Bureau. She lives like an ordinary person, reads books, and goes to classes. Yale Willard tries to attack him and asks if he has already started writing a statement. He doesn't want his partner to follow in his footsteps. There is a spark between them from their touching weapons, and George exclaims, of course, if she becomes an rank investigator, she may not even dream of a long and happy life. Willard looks at him with a crazy look and exclaims, absolutely right behind him, people in blue robes begin to appear, on which the pentagrams do not light up. George just frowns in response. An unforgettable light shines in Shen Yu Cafe. He holds a cup in his hands and notes that he cannot become an alcoholic. Too much has happened in these few days. What did that girl say who burst into tears and went home? She seems to have something to do with very busy events in her life, but he can't remember anything. He then reasons that when a person has his own establishment, then he can meet outside visitors who simply need someone to talk to, not to mention good business, the person does not have to think too much, and the work in general is not so boring. After all, this is exactly the lifestyle to which he has always strived. But now the events related to the conscription are only spinning in his head. His life became part of this world with all its magical creations. But maybe this is for the better. And in the end, he now has a lot of new acquaintances here, Aina and friends, even Sun Lin and Byron. People who need to be needed. If a person does not have friends, then he will never get out of the pit of loneliness and emptiness. Su Lin and Shen Yu walk into the cafe and ask in bewilderment, what is she doing here? She only says that he died. Then Yu understands everything and is horrified. They stand opposite each other and are silent. Shen Yu thinks it's been so long since he turned here, but at that time he only cared about Aina. But there were no French relations between them. His friend was this lazy uncle who came to sit and drink coffee with him. The man who was chasing everyone was trying his best to protect the city now. Yu approaches Su Lin and asks, quiet language. The analysis sadly confirmed this, yes. Except for violations of previous punishments, she is ready for anything he must help her take revenge, he hears this, and clenches his hand into a fist, repeating his revenge. Behind him, a huge flame flashes and shows two pairs of eyes. Lin looks at this with tears in her eyes. Shen Yu tells her to tell him everything in detail, everything she managed to find out. When evening comes, the entire sky is covered with dark clouds. The port is quiet and deserted. Yu raises his hand and notes that the rain has stopped. There is a hopeless sea ahead. People gave this name to all water surfaces in this world because if people move away from land, the area above their head will slowly disappear from sight until it finally disappears beyond the horizons of the sea. So the best way to exist in the world is to live in the very center. Because this way, at least there are people around who can protect him. The time before, Su Lin was sitting opposite Shen Yu and noticed that the glass overpass could be used to cross the wall wall. At this point you can head southeast and walk 17 kilometers, and you can also get to Boland Harbor. Many ships leave the city of Nolan through this harbor, and so they set off into the dark sea. Yal Willard died somewhere on the coast, and is now probably heading to the Havens to escape. The Anti-Magic Bureau has already sent all its forces. Even if she did not participate in the operation, he would have very little chance of escaping. But she wants him to not have any difficult chance of slipping away. Yu listens to her carefully and says that Willard cannot imagine escaping punishment. He is then enveloped in the fog and turns into it as well. White mist appears from the roof and Yu appears in another world. He noted that if he constantly gave off the aura of an extraterrestrial god, then Yale Willard would definitely come to him. The sky is completely covered with black clouds. 
Willard looks up and tearfully says that he needs to temporarily let Nolan go and hide in another country for a few years. No, at least for 20 years. If these people manage to find out everything, then he will have to hide even better. 100 years ago, he received the divine blessing of the almighty bestower of peace. He is already an unusual mortal. You can say that he is the son of God, now he is immortal. He just needs to close himself off from everyone, and then everything will get better again. But suddenly he frowns and exclaims, What kind of aura is this? It happens regardless. He turns to the side and heads into another building. When he comes inside, he immediately exclaims, Here a man stands in front with his back to him, who noticed that he has finally arrived. Then he turns around, and it turns out to be George. He turns to Yale Willard and says that he has been waiting for him for a long time. Willard looks at him in bewilderment and frowns and exclaims, George, it can't be who he is black fog begins to emanate from his head and Shen Yu appears in its place. He confirmed with a smile that he was the one Yale Willard was thinking about. He is the messenger of God who gives peace. He called him here to tell him something. Willard failed to get an eternal buy. He hears this and exclaims in bewilderment, why? Did he really do something? Yu appears behind him and remarks, it's not enough, it's not enough but he's already close. Yale Willard wonders how he appeared behind him. Suddenly Shen Yu is already leaning to the side and explains that he has something to do. Willard looks at him and confidently clarifies something. Yu explains with a smile that yes, he must sacrifice his soul. Then he disappears and says he doesn't have time to think. His enemies will soon be here to catch him. A fiery stream of energy flies through the roof, and at this time, every member of the Demonic Bureau a doctor with blonde hair runs and notes that the aura of an extraterrestrial god has suddenly appeared. He kept an eye on a aura's rank and noticed that this was really the one he was thinking about. Suddenly, aura stops and sees a large, unforgettable circle with patterns in the sky. Who goes up there and one of the members of the Anti-Magic Bureau shouts that it's Yao. He looks at them with a crazy smile and declares that they are all late. He will soon receive his eternal rest. Only after finding eternal peace could they achieve what they wanted. But they are all mired in me because they are waiting for their friends and relatives, and they are not able to sacrifice them. How can they know what eternal peace is? Suddenly someone's voice is heard, yell. Willard freezes in place, and Aura and the members of the Anti-Magic Bureau also stop. Shen Yu appears in the air, wearing a suit and mask. Yale Willard exclaims that this is God at peace you is lucky that everything is going according to plan. First, he had to lure him into the warehouse and prevent him from escaping until the bureau members arrived. Then he must force him to sacrifice his soul for the sake of the next call. And then complete disappointment awaits him. Willard looks at him with a crazy look and says, a guide in the wilderness, a singer of truth, giving the world indestructible serenity, their peacemaker. He brought him as a gift of the soul, he extracted him from the depths of the void, he must respond to his call. He asks him only one thing, that he send eternal peace to all these mortals. But Yu declares that he refuses to grant him eternal peace, but he accepts his gift. His soul now belongs to him. Blue energy streams begin to emanate from Yale Willard after his soul bursts out of his chest. He looks ahead with empty eyes and wonders why this happened. That messenger deceived him. His hand goes to Shen Yu, and he holds it in his hand, deliberately wishing George to sleep peacefully. Willard then falls and Aura notices that he has disappeared apparently God has left. The shining circle above them disappears, and there is a hole in the ceiling of the building. Yale Willard lies on the floor, crushed under a concrete slab. He approaches him and addresses the members of the Anti-Magic Bureau dealing with the issues. Do they think he has received his eternal rest? He thinks not. On the day of George's death. You sat at the table opposite Lin, handed her a folded paper, and asked her to go to this villa and find a man named Byron there. She should tell him that this is a request from the fog and the quiet tongue. Maybe he has a way to bring George back to life. Lin was very surprised by these words and wondered whether to return him. But resurrection is a forbidden technique, and besides, only extraterrestrial gods are able to use it, and this man talks about resurrection so calmly, it seems so easy. At the moment of his thoughts, Yu looked at her with a swift gaze and asked a question. Is she afraid or simply does not want to do this? She continued to warn that the Anti-Magic Bureau prohibits anyone from using the resurrection technique. Even if this prohibition is violated by the investigator, the consequences for him will be almost equal to the consequences for summoning an extraterrestrial god. 
She clenched her hand into fists and realized that this was in no way against her influence. She simply could not tolerate any evil. After this decision, she suggested out loud, confident that she was right, that she would find Byron and ask him to help bring George back to them. Yu smiled and replied, Okay, he can't determine whether Byron will be able to do it, but he absolutely won't let Willard escape. After some time, the line found itself in a vacant lot in the presence of unknown people next to the tomb, who were burying two guys. Someone said, May the will of fire help wash away their body and mind and strengthen them from all impurity, so that they can find true happiness in the wonderful kingdom of God. The head of the anti-magic bureau looked into the distance while the other guy read data from the books. So that they can find light and peace in the sacred kingdom of God. So that they can find light and its favor in the protection of the kingdom of God. After some time, Yu, who was in the coffee shop, offered her some coffee, which she agreed to take. She looked into the distance, and he said that this was a new flavor that he had recently developed, and it was more suitable for girls. She took a sip, and when she opened her eyes, bright sparks of delight appeared in it. She immediately finished her cup of coffee with incredible speed. This reaction stunned Yu, and he said that these investigators are not at all afraid of getting burned. When she finished her cup of coffee, she told him that it was very tasty, and he said out loud in response that warrior girls are very cool. She put the cup on the table, looked into his eyes, and told him that they held a conference among the investigators who took part. The tests were low, B-rank investigators, the meeting mainly discussed two things. The first is due to the fact that events with calls often began in Beland, and the leadership decided to return all investigators of rank A and S with their commands to the city, and secondly, it was too much about him. The anti-magic bureau decided not to quarrel in any way with him, but on the contrary, they are looking for ways to please him in order to maintain his connection, and now, instead of George, she will use his services at the expense of public funds. He asked her again with dissatisfaction favors. In the sense, she will eat and drink here at the expense of general executions. She was embarrassed by the words and looked in the direction of these words, tried to mutter something, and then said that she wanted to say that she would be the investigator and contact him instead of George. And by the way, the boss told them that from now on all over Nolan, in all continents, maybe even all over the world, there may be people who will at least infiltrate Beland to call on extraterrestrial forces, because now everyone knows that in Beland, calling on force has become commonplace. You reacted calmly to these words and told her that everything was fine, and he understood. But how is George? She was dumbfounded by this question and suggested, This old fool said that he could not talk to him for now. He now needed time to finish with the cases that he could not take care of as an investigator. You smiled back at her and said, That's how it is, now everything is clear. Meanwhile, George and Byron stood on the roof and looked into the distance. George spoke to him, which means he really was communicating with an extraterrestrial god. Then why did he bring him back to life? Is he not afraid that someone will draw him? Byron replied, realizing that his old friend was so unhappy, and he had a feeling of sadness in his soul. George, he has a choice, he can swear allegiance to him or report everything to the Anti-Magic Bureau, thereby killing him and his daughter, and of course, killing himself too. George shouted at him. He definitely had to put himself in that position in front of him, he answered, standing on the edge of the roof. Yes, he likes it. Now they have no choice about it, and they can only accept their fate and start a new life. George replied that he saw that his daughter's return to life made him too happy and he should film this moment so that his daughter could see it. Byron shouted to him, No, at the same time, Lynn turned to you and continued to tell him that this old grump should be very happy now. He regretted work every day, and now he can finally rest. You laughed at her words and said that he thought she was going too far with him. She replied that it was only before that that he acted seriously. You said that it was time for him to go, because he had a lot to do, but he was always glad to see her. She walked out of the kitchen onto the street and, walking past a crowd of people, thought that she had such a strange feeling, as if this guy had already calculated everything, and everything was under his supervision. Every step, the fate of all people, in the end everything is connected with him. It's like it's one big chessboard from the Anti-Magic Bureau, the Order of Ashen Chaos and the Quiet Tongue. These are all his chess pieces at that moment, an object in her pocket lit up. She grabbed her stomach and screamed in pain that it was burning badly, after which she said that she needed to find a deserted place. She walked into one of the alleys, leaned against the wall, looked down and said this. 
She saw a magical mark on her stomach and wondered what kind of seal it was. Popular music was playing in the coffee shop, and many people gathered around the table and drank coffee. Yu, who was walking around serving customers with a smile on his face, walked up to one of them and said that his coffee would be ready soon. At that moment, a girl in a green skirt appeared behind him and told the owner that she had come to him again. He asked her to find an empty seat and attach herself. When he entered the room and sat down at the table, he said that two months had already passed since the events with the Order of the Quiet Tongue, and thanks to the good weather in these two months, business in the cafe began to flourish. It is possible that he was miraculously saved from bankruptcy, and still he will have to hire a new employee, otherwise it will be difficult for him to cope with everyone alone. A blue magic ball appeared in his hand. He squeezed it with his fingers and spoke. After the last call, the freezing duration increased to 10 seconds. He almost used it when he was one step away from bankruptcy. A notebook with notes was opened in front of him. He read it and spoke. Although Su Lin said that the Anti-Magic Bureau simply turns a blind eye to such minor violations of the law, but they do not want to spoil their reputation because no one knows they may suddenly change their ways towards him attitude. At that moment, his eyes glowed with magical light, and many physical rays appeared around him. In his case, Willard appeared, who said that whoever possesses the cross will gain the power of a magical barrier. The barrier does not exist in reality, and it will be in perfect condition. Regardless of whether they are injured, poisoned, cursed, or anything else done to them, the barrier will completely protect them, but obviously it comes at a cost. Anyone who uses this will distinguish between different voices, sounds, noises, thereby gradually mastering uncontrollable madness. You held the ball to himself and said, simply put, it is something like a search engine that contains a hundred years of information. For an uneducated person, as well as one who does not have deep knowledge in this area, the memories of this guy are much more important than some old relics. He approached Yal and said, he is so helpful shadow mask, movement ring, ancient cross. He already knows everything about the features of using these artifacts, but he has never paid the price for them, although he can use them, perhaps this is a special power of extraterrestrial gods. Willard's memories are full of all the methods of learning non-verbal techniques, and even ordinary people can learn these techniques, but he could not learn anyone. He tried to perform magic rituals in the cafe, but no result came out. He was upset by these thoughts, took a deep breath and said, it doesn't matter anymore. Maybe he just doesn't have talent. At that moment, a loud sound was made nearby and someone's voice began to pronounce, the earth invading another world, a country without a face and falsehood, which has conquered millions of people, glorified by everyone, a colorless city that amazes the imagination of people. He gives him a gift of a blade that has learned to change its shape. You took out a cabinet of white face mask, and the unknown continued to say that he was asking him to kindly open a passage to him and accept him as an insignificant one in their world, so that he could see the current strength. You said with a smile, well, we can act. At that moment, a smoke screen appeared around his body, which enveloped his body. He found himself inside it and said that in the origin of extraterrestrial gods, a colorless city is mentioned. This is a huge world. Due to the fact that it has absorbed countless lands, at first glance, it may seem that there is almost no end to it. There must be an extraterrestrial god who personifies the blade and says that there are troops of war on every piece of land. He thinks that he will not give him a gift, but he can give weapons to everyone who infiltrates his city so that they can fight in time. He looked at the knife in his hand and said, as long as he hides his small knife for caution and the city, this is not the end. How could he disguise himself there? He found himself in a mixture of black and white. It was a large building. He stopped in the center and said, This is a poor college. He extended his hand towards the building, and from his touch everything began to blur before his eyes. And after a moment he said, These are the difficulties from the memories. What a strange place. Is everything really so colorless here? And it seems that he thought that someone was waiting for him in the library. It doesn't matter. He'd better go and have a look. He put on a mask, a decent suit, took a cane in his hand and headed towards the building, reciting to the Order of Ash Chaos, their sacrifices are truly impressive. When he entered the component, he saw shelves with books and, passing by this, began to say, that must be somewhere nearby. At that moment, a beautiful girl appeared in front of him and told him that he had arrived. She was wearing a revealing costume and stopped in front of him. 
He looked at her carefully and said, Silver hair, red eyes and snow white skin, she looks like Aina, only much older and has a completely different temperament. She came closer, bowed and said, Welcome to the colorless city. She is the all-knowing witch, the one who awakened and invited him here, and she is very happy to see him. She winked at him, which embarrassed him greatly, and he tried to talk something, after which he sharply asked the question, what does she need from him? She replied that the light hunters demanded the blade from her, but she realized that she would not give her things to ordinary mortal people, so she wanted to get his blade and give it to this light hunter, and in exchange he would receive a special reward. He was surprised and asked what kind of reward this was. She smiled and replied, Of course, it's a different blade. What is he talking about? You blushed even more with shame and replied that he was thinking about the same thing. When he looked at her, he thought that while in a state of summoning, he saw for the first time a person in front of him who communicated with him so calmly. There's a chance she's not even human. He hoped she's not a succubus. She looked at him with a grin and asked again, Is this not enough for him? Then, as a bonus, she will show him pieces of the future. He was surprised and wondered about the future. The girl explained, of course, she was a witch, but first she would give him a blade that could change shape. He replied that he accepted her gift, and after speaking, she threw a magic ball into his hand. He caught it and wondered, a silver glass pearl. She approached him and asked the question, where is she? He became embarrassed and replied that now he would benefit her from this. He reached into his pocket, pulled out an object, which he threw into her hand, and said the answer, please. At that moment, he realized that she was definitely a succubus. The girl lowered her gaze to the floor and suggested that the light hunter would soon arrive in the land. He will look for someone who pretends to be a god and will try to destroy everything connected with it. You looked at her and asked, is she posing as a god? It's him, isn't it? Pretending to be a god must be something difficult in the eyes of the clergy. Did someone really complain about him? She continued to talk. As a bonus, she sparked his future. He who pretends to be a god will lose in the end. She can already see his defeat. First, he will win, destroy all his enemies, and then light will shed in the darkness. And at the most necessary moment, he will descend from heaven into the eyes of all people and simply disappear. Not a trace will remain of them, and he will cease to exist. He must have understood what she was talking about. She turned in his direction with a grin, and he wondered, Who is this mysterious woman, and what kind of nonsense was she talking about? At that moment, traces of the emerging wind appeared around his feet. He reappeared among the table dust and realized that it seemed that something would happen again soon. He looked up. One thousand years ago, one kingdom began to prosper, and people began to plunge into the oceans of their desires. The kingdom grew and became stronger and stronger. The king's military army gained superpower. But one day they acted in a revolution with one witch who was sealed by some sect. The witch was shown before everyone in the royal square. She had silver hair and red eyes. She had such health that it drove people crazy, and all men, women, old people, and children fell before her charms and were in awe of her. She said that now she would predict the future for them as her gratitude. As soon as she uttered these words, all the joyful cries of the people died down. Smiling in front of all the people, she predicted a terrible prophecy that this kingdom would soon come to an end, and all men, women, children, and old people would perish. People were shocked, they got angry, and thus refused to believe in the prophecy. They wanted to kill her, hang her, burn her. They wanted to make her blood public and bring her head. But she just up and disappeared, leaving people with only terrible predictions. A few years ago, the kingdom was still prospering. A great military army captured almost half of all the lands, and there were no enemies who could defeat them. But the day came when the royal family, which sought to seize everything on earth, decided to encroach on the afterlife. They called upon a god who provoked people into the kingdom of the dead, and in an instant, the entire kingdom was destroyed from a prosperous civilization, and there was nothing left but silent silence. The witch who ended the whole world, the witch with a prophecy that she sinned and foretold the end, that's what the people called her, and her distinguishing features were reddened eyes and silver hair. Today, all harbingers, oracles, fortune tellers, and other witches hold their heritage, and they are all her descendants. Why does he see this place? This appears to be Yale Willard's private office. These things that remain inside can probably be sold for little money, and then you will have to look for where they are. You looked at the magic ball in his hand and began to speak, comparing them. You would think that Aina is one of her descendants. Suddenly, he suddenly fell silent and realized. 
Having examined the ball that there could be no mistake, he decided to check something else. The magic ball glowed with a bright light, illuminating the entire circle, and I thought with a frown, a blade that can change shape is a consequence of the destruction class, and can freely change its shape at the request of its owner, as well as possessing enormous power, the price for using it is a deficiency. Part of its owner's body. Be it a finger, ears, perhaps internal organs, and even skin. The wound received for being used as a price cannot be restored, and if you try to cure it somehow, it will happen suddenly. The worst thing is that the price lasts forever. He held a transparent pearl in his hand and said, at the moment, that he lacked this prop for the attack. He had never had to pay for documents before. This time everything should be the same. He squeezed the magic ball in his hand and shouted to change. All the smoke appeared from his hands and began to spread throughout the room and envelop his body with dark findings. He again transformed into a guy in a suit and a hat and said, A cane, it can be both a weapon and symbols, and is most suitable for such a respectable person like him. He twirled the cane in his hand and continued to think that this was not bad, because it was also very hard, and of course again, he did not have to pay the price for it. He'll probably have to go to the theater now. Each new acquired connection with the extraterrestrial god himself, who was demanded, and he does not know what he received from the colorless city, but now he has devices for protection, and it would be nice if he still had good protection. After half an hour, you wondered what kind of ability this was. He tries all day, but still thinks absolutely nothing he grabbed the doorknob and decided that he had better go get some coffee. He won't sleep today until he finds out this information at that moment the door handle broke. He watched it and wondered in surprise, how did this happen? What is this terrible door? How can they get out now? He started knocking on the doors with his feet and screaming in anger for it to open, thinking that he had only quietly kicked it. Could it be that his new ability is increased strength, or something in his body has changed? For some reason it seemed so weak to him, or it was his fault from the very beginning. These thoughts made him think, and he screamed when he saw a broken door on the floor. What? He did it how much does this door cost? He saved so carefully for this, and still paid all the money back he sat at the table alone, and said that he thought that the new opportunity would not only expand his strength skills, but also strengthen his defense. It's no use just relying on what he has to try. He took out a long knife and cut his hand until it bled, causing it to splatter, and he cried out in pain. At that moment, some blonde girl came into her coffee shop and asked in surprise, Is this masochism? This guy is just some kind of pervert you look terrible as he reached for his blood, and the girl wondered, are they all like that? A drop of blood actually landed on his tongue, and she mentally wondered, are they all the kind of spinners? In reality, he was very frightened of the blood, screamed loudly, and when he saw the visitor, he asked to show her and sit down. She looked at him in surprise and agreed, and he invited her to start a cup of coffee. She came closer, and he asked the question with a twisted smile, what does she want? She looked at him confidently, sat down opposite him and said, waving her hand, that she wanted iced coffee. Thank him for that. He frowned and asked again, maybe hotter would be better. It's raining outside, her whole body was wet from the rain, and he noted that she was all wet, after which he looked thoughtful and stated that something was wrong here. There is a snowstorm outside and already late at night. She showed up at his doorstep and behaves very politely. She's definitely from the other world, he knows people who can drink only prepared coffee in one gulp, so people getting wet in the rain and wanting to drink this cold coffee no longer surprises him. He stood up and told her with a smile that she didn't have to be so reserved when she came here for her to be his visitor, and he gave her a dry towel. She examined her body and told him thank you when she suddenly realized that she had ruined his floor with her wet things. And according to legend, the owner of this cafe loves to torture his enemies, he can turn them into a hell of eternal suffering so that they die in agony. He's just some kind of madman he picked up a cup of coffee and, with a frustrated expression on his face, said that he needed to do it more gently. He doesn't know, currently his strength has increased, so he needs to be extremely careful. He no longer has the money to buy a new service. He approached the girl with a cup of coffee and suggested, Beautiful lady, here is her coffee. He presented a cup and made a drawing of beautiful milk which she noticed and thanked him for it. After she raised the cup to her mouth with a treasured hand, she reasoned that according to the legends of the other world, the mysterious owner of the cafe, similar to a puppeteer, can indifferently control everyone who asks him for help. 
First, he awakens the taste of all the bitterness and happiness of the world, and then the moment he appears to saturate the consciousness with complete disappointment, he plunges people's souls into the abyss of hopelessness without any hope of salvation. So he is a complete psychopath. He looked at her in bewilderment and asked questions. Was she really trembling? He continued his thoughts about the fact that she herself wanted iced coffee. The girl looked at him, and in her thoughts was that he easily destroyed the entire section of the quiet tongue, which had power over all of the land. The anti-magic bureau categorically asked that no one else try to provoke him, dear God. What kind of terrible creature is this man? Suddenly you invited her to tell her about the visit of his target. She shook her hand into a fist, and with a menacing look said, Yes, after which she relaxed, smiled and said that, as he should have known, she is an authoritative office, tea flowers, or as usual people call her a completer. He answered with a sharp look, yes, and at that moment he thought about the fact that he has this attitude towards him, that the completionists of this are something like mercenaries, they take into account everyone from the lower strata of society in the other world, because of their work do not have honest connections with employees of the anti-magic bureau. Sun Lin once complained about how one completionist tried to build a relationship with her, and how the idiot gave her a new luxury car, driving her straight to university. As a result, her classmates thought it was her guardian. She was so angry that she wanted to kill him with a knife. Having completed his story, a strange community called the Hidden Pupil eventually appeared. Members of this community call themselves observers. These people mysteriously work at any site on the shore and watch all the events that take place. They record everything that happens in the other world, but they never interfere with procedural events. At the beginning, they thought that these people, although strange, were completely harmless, but the day before yesterday, the people of the hidden pupils suddenly went mad. They began to kill all the people from the other world. Most of the people from her office were killed in very strange circumstances and the force they obey. So mysterious that people cannot even imagine, she wants revenge, and she really needs his help. She looked at him pleadingly, grabbed her jacket, her face turned red with embarrassment, and she said that she was ready to do anything for this at the moment of uttering these words. She was thinking about how he would inflict his perverted techniques on her as soon as possible. He looked at her in bewilderment and asked the question, what was she doing? She was surprised by the discussion of the issue and mentally asked herself, does he really like to do this only to himself? Her hot body did not arouse any interest in him meanwhile. You thought with embarrassment that he admits that she has good qualities to attract attention. But there is nothing better in life. She covered her chest with her hands, was embarrassed by his condition, and he said out loud that he didn't want to get involved in all these situations once again, because these were her problems after all. She said that she understood him, and in that case, it would be better to go home. Finally, he suggested that an umbrella should visit the door, and she could take it, but should not forget to return it later. The girl lowered her gaze and left the area with vegetables in her hand, saying out loud that she thought she still had a chance. He just dropped a hint about it. If he no longer saw her or had at least some connection, then why did he need to give her the cafe property? Since he doesn't need her body, then she will try to get this thing and thus will definitely make him suffer from her sympathy. However, on the other hand, boss, do girls prefer this style more? A bright girl with red hair appeared in an open umbrella, and the finisher finished, but now girls like her are needed most of all meanwhile. While you sat silently in your kitchen, his expression changed to a twisted one, and he wondered, did people in their time already work and pay? He'll go bankrupt so soon, he looked at his hand with a shining ring and suggested that, apparently, he could only rely on this call, which could lead to good luck during the day and misfortune at night. But it won't work as soon as he puts it on. First, you need to knock it three times. Tomorrow, he will try it out in action, but he doesn't have the money to fix the door to his room. The next day, several customers were sitting in the coffee shop. You stood at the bar and said that these rings were of no use. Only two visitors and both familiar girls came. One of them seems to be in a very bad mood today, and she didn't want to talk about it, so it's better to let her sit alone for now. At that moment, a mustachioed man in a suit approached him and said with a smile on his face, the owner, his cafe is simply incomparable. You thanked him for this compliment after the man pointed his fingers at his side and said, especially the acidity for him. The acidity of coffee is the personification of energy and a living soul if there was insufficient acidity in the coffee beans. Then it would be obvious that the coffee has no life and no taste, but only a slight emptiness. 
You laughed in response to this statement and said, scratching the back of his head, he probably just liked this coffee, the man replied. It means he would like to sponsor him, the young man. He was surprised, grabbed the red envelope from his hands, and told him what a lucky event it was. These are all the fruits of his backbreaking labors, the man smiled and said, then great, he just had a favored establishment, and he doesn't want it to close. His master, Mr. Felix, is going to have lunch with Mr. Fred next week, so he will be very busy and will not be able to come this week. You told him that the meeting was being arranged by the richest philanthropist, Mr. Carmel Fred. Then they should be careful, and he will wait for his return. See you later when night fell. I lay lightly in bed and thought that, with the support of Mr. Jonas, he could relax again. He wants a lot of money and literally sees in his dreams how he became rich. He closed his eyes and smiled, but suddenly his facial expression changed. He sharply opened his eyes, and before that he saw an unforgettable light and how it appeared in an unknown space. He stopped and asked with fear, Aina? The voice told him, the source of endless torment, and the leader, the one who hid among the white fog you smiled and spoke. He thought it was her Aina appeared opposite him, sitting on her knees and holding her chest with her hands. The voice continued to say, the almighty lord of the ash. This appointed him a wide smile appeared on Yu's face. He grabbed her cheeks, and she continued to speak in a trembling voice that demanded him he must answer her call. He looked at her in bewilderment and thought, if you look closely, it seems to him that she has matured a little, and she looks too much like that succubus. Aina opened her eyes and said, Great Lord of Ash, she felt his gaze you frowned and asked why there was no soul in her eyes, as if she were in a dream. He waved his hand in front of her face and stopped, after which she smiled and said that she felt his presence. He spoke her words, how did she feel his presence? What after he covered his mouth with his hand, jumped to his feet and repeated what she needed. She could not understand what was happening, and he asked the question, What is this communication speed? The mighty Lord of Ash answered. And I thought that she ended up in Era 26. Aina said that she came here to call him for help. Please let her light up her hidden pupil according to the team's research. They have enough evidence to suggest that a mysterious society that calls itself the Hidden Pupil wants to summon an extraterrestrial god to Beland. You smiled and wondered, is that all? He thought they were up to something big. She continued talking. In the process of creating factors, these people had to face unforeseen circumstances. Most of their members simply fell into madness and began to create a fight, killing everyone from the other world. But they did not touch the people from the misty world at all. You looked into the distance and thought, taking into account the factor of preparation for the beginning of the spiritual art, it is something like a magical turn. Is there anyone else who thinks that he is not capable of studying the field of mysticism? Thanks to Willard's soul ball, he now knows everything Aina screamed sharply. The people from the Order were also attacked. He thought about the fact that she shouldn't scream so suddenly, after which he touched her head and mentally spoke. The transfer of consciousness froze again. It's still 26 Aina lowered her gaze and said with a sad expression, the mighty Lord of Ash, she wants to know what will happen to the Order in the future. Should they fight the people from the Hidden Pupil? You thought about the situation. Is the reason why the members of the Hidden Pupil are making notes about the other world is to extract an unusual factor. That is, it is something like a call to call an extraterrestrial god. It seems that there really is a mysterious extraterrestrial god who likes to poke his nose into history and observe the past. First, he stopped his thoughts and said, let a little time pass, and then the future itself will give them the answers they need. The surrounding reality began to evaporate, and Aina established that she understood everything and would now listen to his advice. He smiled and said, It's still much better to see in a dream. It's much safer. Suddenly he heard someone's voice, possessing the life of all living things, which is why he suddenly opened his eyes and wondered if he had really returned. The enemy of ash and dust, coming from the white fog you raised his head and wondered, White fog. He paid attention to him several times, and he said, Anyway, nothing threatens him in his sleep, so he will see what is happening there, and he took a step to the side. Byron appeared among the fog, and he said that he knew it would be him he heard from George that after his daughter was resurrected, he became very energetic, so now he appreciates that he has finally changed. Byron fell to his knees and spoke, Great One from the Mist, he wants to ask him about a matter related to the Salian clan. This clan wants him to enter the Grey Dust. Being loyal and servile to him, he does not know whether he should join another organization. You wondered what kind of Salian clan this was. 
It seems that he heard that such a clan used to exist on the second continent, but that was 1,000 years ago. Have we really become their successors, and what else is this grey dust that he hasn't heard anything about? If he wants to go to him, then let him come out. Why would he bother with it? He replied that he approved of his choice, and Byron disappeared. You woke up in his bed and realized that he had returned, after which he manually reached for the phone, discussing under the pillow, saw that it was only four o'clock in the morning, and said that he could not sleep at all, so it would be better to go and look for something anything. When he sat in the lotus position, a magic ball appeared in front of him, which illuminated the entire area, and the voice of the ball said, Among the Franks, the most noble ones called themselves Salians, they live to this day. This is the name of the Franks. This is a human race that lives on the territory of the second continent. They have white skin, gold, silver hair, brown and blue eyes. The Salian clan, which has always been considered one of the most postal clans, was almost destroyed 1,000 years ago. The heirs of the Salian clan still live in the other world. These people are overly arrogant and rarely interact with people of the lower class. You closed his eyes and asked, the old mystical clan of aristocrats. The voice reported that Grey Dust is the strongest and most mysterious organization of wizards in the entire second continent, resulting in the beginning of a number of high-class wizards whose motives remain a mystery. These organizations have existed for several thousand years. You opened his eyes, silently looked to the side for a while, after which he suddenly accepted the magic ball, bringing this ball to his face with a smile and said how useful it is, now it is located only on this. After some time, a visitor came to the coffee shop, looked at the cat and thought that this creature was playing a staring contest with her. But she was not afraid of it, the cat let out a loud meow, and at that moment you quickly approached it, hit the animal and asked not to do this to customers. Lin laughed at what was happening, and he asked her not to laugh either, after which he asked the question, does she also have business with him today? She replied that she wanted to help him. An old man who lived in the slums suddenly died, and recently she discovered the remains of spiritual art nearby. He loved to pamper small children who also lived in poverty, and gave them fruit. In general, he was a good person, and she had only recently seen him. You asked again, so she wants to know who it was. She answered with confidence, yes, things about the fortune tellers are very bad, and other researchers are busy grouping the hidden pupil, she has few friends, so she came to him you looked at her with delight and realized that the key word here was hidden pupil, and he needed to figure out a way to continue this conversation. He spoke, hidden pupil, these unfortunate madmen, what does she think about them? She frowned and mentally asked herself, are they happy madmen? She thought that this person had already taken control of everything that was happening, there is no way to get rid of the seal on her stomach, and she is sure that it was his doing, and he chose her. After these thoughts, she told him in response that the Anti-Magic Bureau had already confirmed that the Hidden Pupil Organization clearly had bad intentions, and now the Arank investigator and his team were responsible for exterminating it. According to their research, these people from the misty world initially experimented with scientists, history buffs, and were interested in everything mysterious, but suddenly they began to gather together and one by one fell into madness. You said in response that he already knows about this, as in exchange he wants her to look in the archives for information about the hunter with the light and the false god. She asked him again, light hunter, false god. He replied that she could go now. It was evening outside and the vegetable sign lit up. The completionist girl, who was in front of one of the buildings, narrowed her eyes and said, Hurry up, she needs to achieve this, the coffee shop has an unforgettable light on and no visitors. Shen Yu thinks out loud, light hunter, false god, hidden pupil, salient clan, grey dust, and now some old man who died recently. Su Lin said that this should be the person in charge of all this. These countless connections ultimately provide a single thread of fate. In a sense, there are simply no coincidences the black fog around him clears, and you appears in a black suit and white mask. He smiles and, putting on the ring, notes that no lucky events happen today either. He feels that these high-end instruments are beginning to lose their effectiveness. Why is there no one among the callers who would sacrifice gold bars? Well, at least he would have decided on some decorations for bank checks. Using the words he has found, he opens the door and leaves the cafe. It's deep night outside, the stars are twinkling brightly in the sky, and someone's footsteps are heard. The completionist sits with his elbows on the wall, and holds a syringe with red liquid in his hand. She thinks she has one last dose of K-155 madness blood left.
If she manages to carry this out in her body, she can survive. But she must hurry. Her vision becomes very unfocused and fully aware that she is about to be captured. Suddenly someone approaches her, she turns around in fear and dreams of the devotion of a snarling monster. She exclaims that she didn't have time to do anything, just two of these monsters destroyed their entire head office. If she had more time, she could persuade the owner of that cafe to help. The monster begins to manifest itself towards her, when suddenly someone waves a cane. Shen Yu appears, and in one motion stops the monster, throwing it aside. He asks with a smile, is it he who has become so big, or is it very weak? He rejoiced at the thought that now he looks incredibly cool. The completionist is surprised to work for him and wonders, is this the owner? He dealt with this twisted monster so easily, this man clearly has destructive power, but she suddenly widens her eyes when she sees something ahead. In front of her rises a huge creature with thin horns who holds a sword in his hand. Finalizer of thoughts that this is the aura of an extraterrestrial god. Maybe this person is a messenger from an extraterrestrial god, or maybe he is not a person at all. Maybe this is his seed of chaos, which took the form of a person. Shen Yu looks at her and embarrassedly thinks, is it just his imagination, or did he overplay his hand? If he wasn't mistaken, it was a monster fish. Since all sides look like this, he hit the fish, and now makes fun of it. He hopes this won't hurt his reputation too much. The final litter sits in front of him with tears in his eyes, and, as expected, noticed that no one knows how to maintain composure in front of the aura of an extraterrestrial god. No one except that succubus, then he turns to Christy and greets her. She also greets him and produces a glowing blue package from her pocket, handing it to you. She explains that this is for respected Shen. He must take these materials to make a potion called Dream Vision as her letter to him. She hopes that he will help her dead comrade. She will be able to take him to where members of the hidden pupil group are hiding. That is, to their lair Shen Yu smiles and comments that this is great. This monster that was chasing her must have simply lost control. Other than the evil look of it, it doesn't have any significant qualities. He thinks he can handle others. Christy is injected with blood from a syringe into her shoulder, and Yu then exclaims that they can destroy the monster's lair after some time they headed to the desired house. Christy walks along the road and remembers that ten of her colleagues in Europe are in front of each other, and only recently they all laughed together, and the warriors were one family. She didn't even have time to blink an eye before these monsters had already broken them into pieces. Of her colleagues, there are now only three left, and now one more wants to leave them and return to his old life. She didn't think that the name of their office, the word the last flower will be lonely endless, would predict their fate. Shen Yu asks if she is okay. She immediately smiles and replies, Yes, she's fine. But then Christy gets sad again, and to achieve anything important, you need to succeed at several things. It's time for her to change tactics. She turns to you and thinks that she needs to get as close to this person as possible if she immediately falls on his feet. Will it be too much? Or maybe without unnecessary hints it's worth calling him master. Even her potion didn't touch him in any way, which means she made too little progress. What else can she offer? because she clearly doesn't have enough strength. What else can she sacrifice? Maybe her insignificant millions of savings in her deposit. But this is just funny they stop and Shen Yu, looking ahead, asks, Is this here? Christy exclaims, Yes, that's right, it's here standing on the shore, an endless river is visible ahead, and it shows that their lair is underwater. Initially this place was a stronghold for secret organizations, members of the Hidden Pupil. These are scientists from the foggy world. They love history and all mysticism. At first they just did their research here. She doesn't know how or where they suddenly gained superhuman strength, but since then they've been calling observers. Secretly, they made a moving recording of everything that remained in their world, and in the end, they simply went crazy and turned into monsters. Shen Yu dries it and suggests that they must be an explanation of some extraterrestrial being or a mystical artifact. Christy looks at him in admiration and exclaims with a thumbs up, just as she expected, he is just a young genius Yu embarrassedly thanks her for the compliment and says that from now on, she should not call him a young genius, he considers it awkward. She frowns at him and thinks, did he understand that she was flattering him? Then he walks forward and says that Christy should move back a little. A flame appears in his hand, and he explains that if they are underwater, they should check it first. Then energy flames begin to emanate from him, and Christy is shocked by this. Suddenly it grows to incredible sizes. 
A small energy flow is applied to the surface of the water and directed directly under the water. Shen Yu thinks there must be a mechanism at the bottom. The energy flow pushes out a complex button, and he mentally exclaims, this is most likely it Yu turns to Christy and announces that he has found a device that is underwater. She continues to frown at him and watch that even his whisper seems very frightening to her. He is simply terrible beyond belief. He is a true master of destruction. Shen Yu works with her and asks for forgiveness for doubting her. He is excited and thinks that this is the first time he has seen someone who reacts so sensitively to everyone. She smiles and says it's okay. Then Yu notifies that in this case they should go. They pumped the water a little, Shen Yu presses the button with his cane and exclaims that he opened it. Christie stands next to him and exclaims that he is a real genius. That is, he is simply magnificent. They then went into a tunnel that opened up on a hill on the shore. It is very dark in the tunnel and Christie, trying to get something from her inner pocket, asks him to wait a little. She must take something. Yu is surprised when she works for her and asks, should I take what? Where did she put it? She continues to diligently search for something and explains that it is very safe to store things in this place. In addition, it gives an additional bonus to the appearance. Then she exclaims that she found it. Christy holds out the golden plate and says, She brought great fire. Shen Yu observes these events that the first flame is the only true god in the second continent. Most people on earth worship him. Of the two billion people, at least half are his followers. The time it represents is twelve noon. Its attribute is light. She raises her hand up and continues to say the spell, Let the ray sparkle, and there will be sun. A glowing ball appeared in her hand, and Yu remarked that this was great, they could move on. Two glowing red eyes appear in a visible location, and are suddenly attacked by a fish monster. He grabs the cane, and by pulling it forward, the monster stops. Christy watches this and notes that this is incredible power. After she starts casting magic, and a green glow appears in front of her. Shen Yu asks in surprise what is she doing. But after she points to the nearest corridor and explains that she has cleaned up the mess he understands, she seems to want to get a good impression from him. Yu smiles and says again that she's great, they can move on. As they begin to walk down the corridor, he notices that there are major monsters appearing there that should not be feared. Fighting them in the eyes of Christy Yu is a real beast. They are moving through a massive stone tunnel when suddenly Shen Yu stops and announces, so this is how it is. She also stops and wonders with excitement whether he has already learned a secret or some key factor from the members of the hidden pupil. Yu smiles and thinks that the colorless city is an extraterrestrial god whose consciousness is quickly going into hibernation. He needs to relax in order to use his full power. They walk into a large room. He notices a vague blue glow and wonders what it is. The spiritual art department differentiates them from each other and creates the illusion of a non-existent glass fence. They look forward and offer the bottom of their hand with schools of fish swimming in it. Christy watches this in surprise and realizes that everything looks just like in an aquarium. This is all thanks to spiritual art. It's just incredible. Shen Yu clarifies, she said that the people from the Hidden Pupil were originally fanatics of such a foggy world and had no idea about the other world. She confirmed this, everything is correct. He then continued, constructing such a vast area underwater and using spiritual arts to prevent water from entering, this clearly did not seem to be the job of beginners. Christy Nomer clarifies, that is, he means that in the Hidden Pupil there is someone, or maybe even several people who came from the other world. Yu moves closer to the barrier and notes that her powers of observation impress him, and he meant it. Then he thinks that for the last two months he has been doing what he has been studying with the soul ball that he received from Willard, but now the opportunity to suffer has finally arrived. Then he heads towards the exit of the room and says that they must continue on their way, go forward. After a while they are taken out of the corridor, and Christy says with fear, Master. Shen Yu doesn't answer at first, but after blocking her path, she exclaims, she must be careful she needs to step back. In front of them, several pairs of red burning eyes are visible from the void. Christy steps back and, trembling with fear, says that she is standing behind. Yu doesn't answer, when suddenly fish monsters come out of the shadows and roar loudly. She exclaims in bewilderment why they are all looking at her. There is an unforgettable glowing ball next to her, and Shen Yu shows her to direct this beam in his direction. The light can attract the attention of these monsters. She frowns and exclaims, Okay, Christy then sends it forward, and the monster fish fall. But Yu activates a protective field, and the monsters fly past him. 
He takes out a cross and eyes, which, with the help of this protection, will be able to remain invulnerable to any attack. Then in his hand, the cane begins to change and turns into a huge whip. Shen Yu swings it and kills first one monster, then another. He continues to cut the air with his whip and kills all the monsters. Soon a mountain of corpses is discovered in front of him, and he notices that it looks simply disgusting. You notices how Christy is throwing up and thinks that even he almost threw up. He turns to her and asks that after she gets better, she cleans everything here. After a while she uses magic and thinks that she must show her abilities well, she must show everything she can do. Shen Yu watches her and realizes that he is jealous of her spiritual arts. Maybe he should hire her as an employee in a cafe. But he often experiments there with his abilities as an extraterrestrial god, with such a sensual reaction as hers, it seems to him that she might go crazy if she continues to be near him. She turns around and holds it in her hand, exclaims, Master, does he clarify what happened to her? Christy hands him the diary and explains that this is where important information must be kept. It was hidden in a secret drawer behind the desk he says she did a great job. She rejoices at his words and opens the diary, which exclaims that she can keep it to him. Shen Yu sheepishly agrees. Okay. Then he reads that people are grateful to the Miracle White, who is paving the way for them to new perfection, if not for his help, they, simple amateurs, would never have been able to understand the essence of this world. They had never met a nobler man than White, who was so excited by electrical voltages. Kindness and simplicity make up one half of it, wisdom the other half. From today, a community of hidden pupils was formed. The miracle worker White told them a lot of information about mystical forces, which turned out to be very important for them. Last night, White, who was called a miracle worker, showed them a miracle on stage. Only one of the influential people managed to build a huge underwater palace and make sure that the river could not leak as part of this magical creation. Thanks to him, they all gained incredible power. Christie continued reading, as per White's instructions, they began to gather a factor to call upon the god so that he could come to them. Recently, the author began to feel something strange. His whole body hurt, but he doesn't know why. When he ate various fruits and vegetables, he had a terrible feeling that he was about to vomit. His body began to change. Perhaps it was a normal reaction. White said they finished assembling the required factor as quickly as possible. His new assistant appeared next to him. He was a blind boy who was not even ten years old. He would have the ability to foretell the future. The author wonders if he might still be worth taking part in his experiments. After all, what can await them in the other world? The others think so too, because no one suspects White of the Hidden Pupil. Shen Yu listens and thinks, This miracle White is the manipulator who controls the Hidden Pupil, hiding behind the scenes. Is he really that pure miracle what was he going to do? Why did he need to collect the necessary factors, and what does it mean to take part in experiments Christy states that the notes end there? Yu hums thoughtfully, and then he praises her, she read well. Her voice was very pleasant. She gratefully works on it, and exclaims that she tried really hard Shen Yu smiles, and thinks that he will probably have to praise her more often in the future. Christy frowns and notes that from the notes, you can tell that whoever wrote this had problems with his head. He thought it was common to get involved with an extraterrestrial god. Even if they were lovers of the misty world, they should have understood that it was forbidden to do this. And the fact that they perceived the changes in the body as a normal reaction suggests that they have already fallen into madness. You agrees, that's right, they should still look for something useful. Christy immediately responds, okay, he must give it to her with the creature of the word she runs to find something. After some time, she returns and says tiredly, it seems that someone has already taken all the necessary items from here, except for the diary with notes, which they probably forgot to take. Shen Yu calms her down and says it's okay, she did a great job anyway. Starting today, she will provide him with something. When Christy hears this, she immediately exclaims, great for this honor, he looks at her, and is surprised to note that she is very easy to support, you just have to give her a couple of compliments, so she immediately starts dancing with happiness. She is very naive. At this moment, Christy wonders if she can sit on her knees and swear allegiance to him. How can I make him happy? She is very excited now. She didn't expect that things would work out so quickly for them. But she hopes that you will not force her to sit on her knees and call him master at every meeting. She will die of shame. But nevertheless, she can do it. Shen Yu asks her to help him find out the cause of death of an old man. He distributes candy in the slums that are nearby. He passed away just recently. 
She immediately frowns and exclaims, she did it all then, she thinks that she must feel good about her ability. Although in Desperate Flowers, there has long been no one left who could help her. But being her finalizer, she will have many connections, and she will only have to spend a little money. Suddenly, a noise was heard from the dark corridor, and then a stream of water burst out across the country. Yu shouts that the water is starting to leak. This must be that miracle worker's trap. Shen Yu understands that he can create smoke and go through some crack to escape, but how should he deal with Christy? After that, he takes a cross out of his jacket and notes that this is the only thing left for him to use. He throws an object at her and yells at her to grab it. The cross lands on her chest. A rushing stream of water appears towards them, and Yu mentally orders them to relax. The power of the colorless city can strengthen the body to the point of impenetrability. Suddenly a bright white glow begins to emanate from it, and Christy seems to be working on it in hypnosis. The cross is also activated. After some time, she lies on the shore, with white fog next to her. Because of this appearance, Shen Yu thinks that the ability to change shape helps him dry his clothes. This is his little life hack. Then he looks at her and notes that if you wear an ancient cross for a long time, you will have to die for it, so it is better not to exceed the half-hour limit. Christy lies unconscious and wonders how she could get stuck on her body. Yu reaches out to take it when she suddenly opens her eyes, but immediately closes them in embarrassment. He silently takes the cross and says with a smile, finally she woke up. Christy looked at him in surprise and noticed that she seemed to have woken up at the wrong moment. But Shen Yu immediately shouts, how could she have such a thought? She was tired of thanking him for saving her. She's fine now. Then Yu says that in that case she can go, but she must be careful, it is possible that he is already following her. Christy gets up and says she understands. Then she leaves and he says he hopes nothing happened to her. But suddenly he thought of something and noticed that Christy didn't feel any vibration at all, which means someone bought it again. The clock hasn't struck 12 yet, unless he's mistaken. The fog looks around him, and when it falls, he sees Byron hard ahead. Yu mentally exclaims that he thought so again his assistant, who faints every time, lies unconscious. She must be very loyal to Byron. But in fact, I had previously approached Byron Hart and noted that she didn't think he wanted to summon an extraterrestrial god. But he immediately says that then he will pay her more than usual. Yanna immediately exclaims that she did everything now he is sitting on his knees in front of Shen Yu and casting a spell, the one who controls all living things, capable of taking life, who came from the white fog, he brought him the drink of the soul. Yu recalls that according to the legends of the church, before the discovery of the universe, the primordial fire created the nourishment of the soul, thereby forming their world, and so the first people began to be born from the white air. Although many do not perceive this as truth, according to legend, considering the soul to be of equal value has magical principles. They say that with this you can create a real living spirit, he extends his hand and says that he accepts this gift. Shen Yu also remembers that it was seen in the Willard Ball that regarding soul drinking, it was useless for most people. Since in history there have been few people who were considered the force that creates a living spirit. In Byron's eyes, he is an extraterrestrial god, which means that maintaining a soul that cannot be used by ordinary people can be of service to people like him. But he really calculated everything. But unfortunately, he only portrays an extraterrestrial god. The last time he saw Aina and Byron Hart in his dream, what they saw was not at all what he saw. Is it really possible that in the case of this call, everything was the same as that time? But then, wouldn't he look stupid if he twirled around here a little? In any case, the main thing is safety. Shen Yu throws his head up and sighs the thoughts that last time he read to Byron Stishok from a happy walk. It seems to him that he will not calm down if he does not read something this time. This may be due to the inequality of existence. Then he begins to explain that there is nothing, there is nothing wrong. A person sees what can be seen, knows what can be known. Byron hears this and remembers that this is a legendary legend about the unity of all living things. This is one of the most forbidden knowledge of the alchemist. If you master this, then master the basics, then you can acquire the ability to separate and unite all matter together. He then announces that he is ready to move on to eternal service to the great god of the white mist. God's gifts for his happiness, his orders will indicate fate, and his greatness will reflect that he is helpless before it. He had already entered the gray dust, as God told him, once he passed their tests, he would kill the hunter of light. 
Then he donates much more treasures to him as a gift Shen Yu hears this and mentally exclaims, Light Hunter, she said that the Hunter of Light would get to Beland and try to do anything to kill the false god. Only he doesn't know what exactly about the fake god she meant him or someone else. He orders Byron Hart to go to the meeting place, where he must find his messenger. This messenger is at Bedend College, he will definitely give him money. And now he has one desire that he must fulfill. And this desire is most important. Shen Yu again finds himself on the shore with the help of the fog and understands that the problem is with him after all, and not with the cafe. Has he really returned to the lake again? The place where the vibration from the call occurs changes with it. He noticed the small bottle, and noticed that he had received a gift again. But the most important thing was that he had obtained information about the Light Hunter. But suddenly Shen Yu understands something, it can't be. The college is located a few kilometers from the hotel, how can he get there? There is no car at night, either his hand begins to turn into mist, and he wonders if he can fly there, but no, it's too risky. Yu is silent for a while, and then remembers that he seemed to see a bicycle somewhere nearby. He approaches one of the buildings, next to which there is a bicycle. Shen Yu says that he apologizes to the owner of this, but he will definitely return it. And then his hand manifests energy, which turns into a small key. He notes that he needs to insert it into the lock's hole and change the shape. Byron Hart stops on a deserted street and uses magic to create a door that opens. Eve runs to the disagreement agreement and screams, Daddy, why is he so late? He made her worry. Byron hugs her, apologizes, it's his fault. But she raises her finger and frowns and says that the main thing is that he's back, she's learned new recipes, he should definitely try it smoked salmon, butter chicken, baked snails, and thick soup with meat and vegetables Byron Hart looks at her with excitement, and Eva clarifies, doesn't he like it? But he smiles and asks her if this is possible. He can't wait to try all these dishes at this time. It is already late evening outside. Shen Yu gets on his bike and shouts ahead. Then he screams, his pupils turn white, veins are visible on his face. The stars will begin to shine in the sky. Byron finishes dinner with Eve. Yu frowning rides a bicycle, and Byron heart hugs his daughter. Shen Yu is riding a bicycle so fast that it is possible. Eve sits on the bed asking Byron if she will ever be able to go out and walk around the city. He closes his eyes and sadly replies that she will be able to do this very soon, she should not worry. He also thinks that he will soon return her to the bright world. Then he turns around and asks for forgiveness, but he has other things to do, so he must go. Eva smiles and replies, it's okay, she was also about to go to bed, he should be more careful. Byron looks at her, then stands up and looks, which he swears to her, she will definitely live life than he does. After a while, he enters the component and passes by shelves of books. Suddenly someone calls out to him, Byron. He turns around and depending on Shen Yu says that he came just in time. Yu's thoughts were agitated. He was afraid that Byron might leave if he was late Byron Hart with the irritation of a man who just came here, and this one has already appeared here. Did he really think about his every step? Could he instantly find himself in any place he wanted? He is truly a dangerous man. With significant words, he clenches his fists firmly. Shen Yu then asks him for the story of what he knows about the Light Hunter. Byron Hart agrees, okay. As we know, the Light Hunter is a cleric of the Crown Church. Not only does he have the power of destruction rank, but he also has various items in the form of weapons that can also create destruction. However, the Church does not like to call these items magical artifacts. They call them sacred weapons. The Light Hunter is one of the ten clerics and has a high status. He recently appeared in Beland for an unknown reason. Yu explains that he came for a false god. The Hunter of Light will stop at nothing to kill the false god. Byron hears this and wonders, is this a fake god? This is the first time he has heard about habits, but since it concerns a clergyman, he cannot treat the whole world so frivolously. Shen Yu shows him to find a way to find this light hunter. He should think about him and pursue him, but not kill him yet. When he gets more information about him, he just has to put everything written in the books like last time. Byron Hart bows and says he understood everything that the messenger told him. But he also thinks that last time the information he noticed flew straight to Georgia, which ultimately led to Yale Willard's death. During everything that happened, God's messenger never appeared in his field of vision. But thanks to his actions, the religious community, whose activities spanned more than 1,000 years, was completely reformed, the investigator of rank as simply retired. Yu suddenly turns around and leaves and says, Great, 
He is waiting for the research results from him. He then thinks that he now needs to return the bike immediately. After a while, Shen Yu returns to the cafe with trembling legs. He leans on the bar counter and inattentively remarks that there is probably no other messenger of God in the world like him who gets around on a bicycle. Then he hits the table with his hand and shouts, This is bullying, this is just a mockery suddenly. He becomes embarrassed and remarks that it's good that he didn't run into any acquaintances. If Aina saw him like this, she would probably explode with shame. Yu sighs and thinks out loud he needs to get back to business. In the ball, Willard noticed that in Balan's soul, not only one person has the status of untouchable. Someone like him should also be careful. Suddenly the ball hits his forehead and his soul flies away. Kola catches it and lands with the ball on the table. It spins it with its paw and after it starts playing. Shen Yu watches this and notes that he only recently gave the vaccine, but this cat is already full of energy. But it won't be long before he takes it to the vet again. Kola hears this and stops playing. It gradually begins to get dark outside and night falls. Today is September 5, the day of exorcism of demons, a traditional church holiday. On this day, people will not leave the house willfully the next night, otherwise they may stumble upon any monsters or demons. Family members travel together and prepare a big dinner, read a prayer in honor of God fire for the fact that it gives light to everyone, and then the will of fire will shine in the heart of every believer after which all the evil spirits that had entered this world simply disappeared. Yu reads all this on his phone, then casually closes his eyes and says, he doesn't know whether these monsters exist or not, but today he didn't have a single visitor. Suddenly he hears some sound. Shen Yu goes outside and exclaims, the guests have arrived after all a girl with horns is sitting on the threshold in front of him. He asks in surprise if she is okay. She seems to be very sick. The girl lowers her head and tries to say something. But Yu leans over to her and says that she should rest a little. But the girl with the horns immediately exclaims, No, this is not necessary. Shen Yu puts his hand forward and explains that he is not a bad person at all. He also wondered if he really looked like a maniac. The girl thinks she doesn't want to hurt him because she's a monster, he hears this, and is very surprised. Are these horns really not decorations? He thinks that this is a ritual in honor of the holiday. Then he strokes her head and calms her down. It's okay, he might even save her. Yu forms a fire in his hand and tells her to look at it. Doesn't she think he's really cool? The girl sees this and wonders what it is. Shen Yu also looks at her in bewilderment and asks again, what? The girl with horns reminds him that he said that he could save her. This is true. Yu, please note that this girl lacks substance. She is familiar with the other world and she needs inspiration. She simply fits the requirements of a new employee perfectly could it be that the phone ring had finally brought him good luck. He then grabs her hand and states that they talk about everything inside with the help of a word. He quickly takes her to a cafe. Shen Yu then sits the girl down at the table and says that she should wait a little. First he has to fix her hair. With the text he produces a towel and quickly dries her hair. She tries to say something again, but Yu runs away and shouts that she should have had a little more after that. He brings her a cup and tells the girl to drink hot coffee to warm up. She sheepishly thanks him. Shen Yu sits down opposite her and asks her to tell him about her problem. Maybe it's not even such a big problem if he can help. The girl is silent at first and then says that her name is Tina. She is a first-year student at Bedend College. Last week, she looked in the mirror and noticed something strange was happening to her. Her ears didn't look like solar energy at all. They looked like animals. Yu hears this and mentally exclaims, animal ears, but now she seems to have quite normal ears. Tina gets embarrassed and asks if he could stop looking at her like that. He immediately apologizes. Then she asks if he really believes her. Shen Yu confirmed this, yes, she should tell further. Tina says that her life always seemed ordinary to her, unremarkable, so she was always bored. She recently began studying mysticism and everything connected with it. Through connections with classmates, she found many books. Yu listens to her and mentally notes that these are standard reasons for suicide. Tina sadly says that she and her friends tried several times to create some kind of magic written in these books, but they never succeeded. Because she slowly began to lose that interest, she simply forgot about everything. But just last week, when she looked in the mirror late in the evening after the soul, she discovered that it had changed. Her ears turned into shaggy animal ears. Yu says that it's not that big of a problem, but other than that, did she have any changes? Tina says that she hears some strange sounds, and these signs on her body are constantly changing. 
Shen Yu hears this and clarifies, are the signs constantly changing? Like her horns on her head? Were they animal ears before? Tina agrees, yes. Sometimes strange ears grow on her head, sometimes horns grow, sometimes she even thinks that she has a tail sticking out from behind, gills may appear. She thought it was like she was turning into a monster. After Tina discovered that she had begun to change, she began to hide it from everyone, even her parents did not know about it. She disguises her body oddities with a hat and thick woolen clothing. She also asked to leave school so as not to go to classes. White told her to keep going, he tells her to never give up. But the sounds she hears do not stop, she will soon not be able to stand it. Unamur gives an explanation, does the white she knows mention a miracle when talking to her? Tina hears this and remembers that he actually spoke to the man. He mentions that he is capable of performing miracles. Shen Yu notices and notes that this white appeared, and is indeed that very pure miracle. Under his leadership, all the participants of the hidden pupil turned into monsters. This girl became his target. He then states that white is not a good person. Tina asks in surprise, is this true? Yu explains that he recently learned that this man has already committed similar atrocities, so she must tell him where he is now. He deliberately added that he was immediately reporting this to additional authorities Tina looks away and explains that this white is just a man from her dreams. Shen Yu hears this and asks in bewilderment, what? She closes her eyes and repeats that it is true. During these fortnights she constantly dreams, and in her dreams she always sees him. Yu frowns and thinks about the meeting in a dream, the ingredients for sleep that Christy gave him. She said that the members of the hidden pupil could see dreams, thanks to that potion, and this miracle white, who hides in the shadows, has powers, passes out with dreams. He can't prepare the potion now. He lacks many ingredients. But could it be that Tina could also turn into those fish-headed monsters in the end? No, he didn't allow this, at least okay, he didn't see their true appearance. But when he imagines that he will have to watch how the little girl who asked him for help turns into such a monster, he is horrified he gets up from the table and hits its surface. Shen Yu announces that he will soon find white in his dreams. It's very cloudy outside, and it's raining heavily. There are lights on in all the windows at school, and the teacher asks if anyone knows the answer to this question. Many students immediately shout that they know, then the teacher says that he can handle one of the blocks. Aina opens the door of the class and movement. Apparently, the changes in her body have stopped, but her mind is becoming brighter and clearer. The speed of her thoughts continues to develop, and gradually she begins to feel all the tangible signs of the spiritual nature, ordinary people who are not susceptible to force your perception. Not only can she now control the almighty flame, but her knowledge is already far superior to that of her peers. She also had the opportunity to learn more about history. In just a few months, under the guidance of the high priest, she had completely mastered the lower stage of the spiritual art. Now for her, able to see energy in space, spiritual art is not something significant at all, but is simply visible to the eye. She closes her eyes and says there is no turning back. Under current circumstances, this is the most she can do for her comrades from the orphanage. A man in a red robe approaches Aina and announces that the spiritual priest is waiting for her. She walks past him and tells him that they can pass then. The man in red and white robes and Aina are chained to the door. He explains that the high priest is waiting for her inside. She opens the doors and goes inside. Aina stops and always greets the high priest. She then turns to the elderly woman and notifies her that the director must leave. She looks up at her and agrees, of course. The high priest looks at Aina and then with a smile says that she should have looked around before coming here. He has already fulfilled all her requests. Now her comrades from the orphanage can study independently and freely, which does not necessarily lead to their entry into the order. They can take the least light duty, ensuring the financial position of the order. They do not need to engage in activities that may harm them. So now she doesn't have to worry about anything. Aina closes her eyes and thanks him. The high priest explains that this is not worth gratitude, who she should thank is the great god. She looks back at him silently, and then he explains that they must return to training camp next week. The priest wants her to meet someone. The senator wants to strengthen power in the political arena, which is very important for their organization, or rather, this will be their best attempt made in the foggy world in recent years. He is just about to turn 70 years old, and this will be the occasion for all his performances to come together. It will be a private gathering. Aina listens to him and realizes that this is the old man with the aquiline nose whom she saw at the moment when the order was attacked. 
Then she asks if she needs help there. Wouldn't it be dangerous since the anti-magic bureau is watching them? The high priest smiles and says that she is little and does not need to worry. This is just a meeting, a meeting with ordinary people. She can even meet her peers there. It just seems to him that she still needs to learn a lot. This applies not only to the other world, but she also needs progress in the world around her. A small bottle of red liquid appears in his hand, and the high priest says that lately he has been thinking about the topic of how to diversify this so that as many people as possible can feel the powers of blessing, gain immortality, and eternal youth. This is what most people want with the essence of the word. The priest smiles widely, and Aina Nahivmer asks, he didn't forget what she asked him for, did he? He explains that of course not. He has already instructed his people to investigate everything related to the hidden pupil and he kept his word without committing any rash actions. He could not even imagine that even the Foundation was confused in all this. She hears this and mentally exclaims, Foundation World Market Fund Organization compared to the current order of Ash Chaos, he is simply a giant. They are said to receive support from their respective governments, but the Foundation is an independent organization until the end. Then she announces that she must tell God's messenger everything. The high priest remarked that he knew she would do this because it would be a wise decision. After that, she turns around and leaves. The high priest is silent and thinks that Aina can find the messenger only because she can print, that is, by God's instructions. If he had offered to find him without God's decree, it would have been an insult to the authorities. Then he turns to one of the people in red robes and asks, By the way, how is Felix? That aristocrat who promotes a medical corporation under his name. They should cancel his meeting with him too much. He has a lot of other worries right now. The man closes his eyes and answers, Okay. When morning comes, Tina spits firmly. Suddenly, she opens her eyes and sits down on the bed. She noticed that there were no signs of bad evenings, but after a couple of moments, she frowns and mentally exclaims what she is even thinking about how can she suspect such a handsome wizard of the analogy. She remembers that last night she bowed to Shen Yu and thanked him for wanting to save her, she just doesn't know how to thank him. She's actually very grateful to him. He holds a cross in his hand and thinks that if this curse changes on Tina's body, then the cross should prevent this. If something even stranger appears, then she will have to put it on for a while and then take it off. She is embarrassed and looks away, saying that, oddly enough, he is looking at her. Yu replies that she should quickly go to bed and rest. He will be on guard here. If she has any problems, he will sort it out. She hears this and frowns and exclaims. On the bed, Shang Yu looks at her with a smile and realizes that her thoughts are clearly not like ordinary little girls. Suddenly, the horns on Tina's head become smaller and then disappear completely. She says she is in terrible pain. Yu looks at her in horror and shouts at her to quickly put on the cross. Then he ties it around her neck and wonders if this doesn't apply. Suddenly, Tina built two large wings behind her. He looks at it and cannot understand whether this is really a curse. Then she won't turn into a terrible monster with a fish head. Her case is much more unique. Shen Yu explains that it seems like a small problem. Tina doesn't have to worry about turning into a monster. She clarifies, is this true? You confirmed this with a smile. Yes, she can rest a little. Tina approaches Shen Yu, who is sitting at the table. He closes his eyes, thinking that Willard's soul ball also did not give any clues about the strange anomalies on Tina's body but he thinks that this is a pure miracle for everyone. She approaches him and explains that she cannot return home now because she is afraid that her parents might see her like this. They are very religious people and can send her to church, but she does not trust people from the church. Is there a way for him to help her? Ordinary people couldn't see those wings. Shen Yu gets up and looking at her wings, he notices that the shadow mask can help her, but he cannot give it away for a long time. And although in the soul ball, Willard mentioned the spiritual art that helped disguise her appearance, but he does not know how to use it and thinks that Tina will also be able to master this art, being so smart. Then he says that he will lend her money, and for a while she will live in a hotel nearby. Tina immediately exclaims and takes the number you looks at her with confusion, and then says that he will go to find her new clothes that can hide her wings, and then take her to the hotel. After a while, the unforgettable light in the cafe turns on, and Shen Yu sits at the table again. He is thinking carefully, wearing a long white robe, with thick hair and a woman's beautiful smile, with long rays of sunshine, radiating light, very temperamental, just a gentleman. To be around him, who somehow felt comfortable, as if he were an angel sent by God. 
Tina described White that way. It seems to him that it will be difficult to live with him, and besides, he thinks that he should find another apartment. Letting Tina stay in a hotel for a long time is not a solution at all. Is it really impossible, even in this world, to get rid of housing problems? Suddenly the door opens and Christy appears on the threshold. She frowns and shouts that she has found a clue. She moves closer to him and repeats that she has a lead. Shen Yu exclaims that Christy did a great job. Does she want a cup of coffee? Iced coffee, just the way she likes it. But she needs to happen for it. Christy wonders if she drinks coffee, then of course you have to pay a hundred for it, or does he have clients who take advantage of his kindness? He casually answers, yes, there is one girl who took her umbrella and never returned. Christy is quick to point out that this is a terrible person, then he brings her coffee and says everything is ready. She happily thanks him and takes a sip from the cup. Then she puts it on the table and says it's absolutely delicious, Yu replies in disbelief that she doesn't know how to exaggerate but she must forget about the coffee and tell him what she managed to find out. Christy calms down and says that the death of that old man with sweets is connected to the Butt family. One of them was there and used an invisible technique that made the old man blame himself for his life. Shen Yu closes his eyes and agrees. How could he not understand this before? She watched his answers in surprise and asked questions. Did the owner really know about everything in advance and did not send her to find the incident but to solve it? Christy frowns even deeper and realizes, yes, this is true. In this case, she should know the report as accurately as possible. Then she began to explain that the one who used the invisible technique associated with the Butt family, an aristocratic family originally from the city of Nolan, said that the Earl of Butt had been in very bad health lately, that he had been in the hospital for a long time. But recently it was noticed that he suddenly discovered health and even took the initiative to start playing golf with his friends. This must have influenced the spiritual art. When you listen to it and think about it, the Butt family sounds more like an ancient clan that has already moved out of the political arena and into the business realm. It had only been ten and a half hours since she managed to get so much information and so detailed. He asked Christy how she managed to find out all this. She explains that she knows a lot of people, and she also has an acquaintance who was near the slums and accidentally witnessed this department. Shen Yu closes her eyes and unsurprisingly realizes that when they first met, she was so selfless, it turns out that she knows all the bullies. He noticed that it was a good job, so he wants to reward her. Christy is embarrassed and exclaims that he is too generous, but Yu says that she has stopped pretending to be an angel. Her expression has already given her away. Then he closes his eyes again and thinks, like the man behind the curtain, he can't always rely on just bluffing to make the horse run faster. He needs to give it more grass. He can't always rely on the brains of his subordinates to settle things. The ritual summoning of magic and Willard's soul ball does not pose any danger, since it corresponds to the quality of the reward. That is, there is no danger if a person does not start looking for problems. With a significant word, he takes out the glass soul ball from his pocket and tells Christy to remember everything after she learns not to talk to the summoned content. She clutches her curls with joy and exclaims, Good a blue energy wave appears and an information window opens in front of Christy. She reads that the Daughter of Silence is a member of the Silent Chanter's family. A target object from the world of the dead, possessing powerful eerie powers. This item has a magical property, being invisible and massless, it can easily kill the isolation of superhumans, against level superhumans it may be useless. Christy then realized that since childhood, she had been around completionists every now and then, and until now, she was only one criminal level relic. She had never come into contact with the spiritual art of this level before after that, she gets up and bows to Shen Yu, thanking him for the gift. What she did for him was really just a small thing. But he explains that she should not say that this is his reward for her. In the future she will receive much more. Then he hands her a piece of paper and asks her to get two copies of the Dream Vision Potion and deliver it to him. Christy immediately exclaims that she will try to get everything set up very quickly, but she thinks that these ingredients will require a lot of money. But it's totally worth it. After a few moments, she suddenly opens her eyes and eyes, this can't be happening. Those people are from the hidden people because they are all ordinary people. Where did they get so much money to never use the dream vision? She said that the owner deliberately kept silent about this. He wants to attract her again. You looks at her in surprise. Christy then states that she will also provide dream viewing materials so that she can cover the person behind the curtain. 
he should be looking forward to her performance. Shen Yu hears this and wonders in surprise, by the way, why didn't he think of checking the source of the materials? After that, he says she can go. Su Lin walks down the street in the rain. She muses, Light Chaser turned out to be a big deal in the church. If it weren't for the fact that he revived George, she would never have given him information about Light Chaser. The Anti-Magic Bureau still hasn't figured out a way to get rid of him, but they can do it to her and George. As long as she does not violate her principles, she continues to cooperate only with him. Cola jumps up playfully, but notices that Yu is not paying any attention to it. Suddenly Lin comes into the cafe, and it immediately comes up with something. Shen Yu greets her with a smile. They haven't seen each other for a long time. It's unusual to see her in a new look. Then he looks at the cola with red eyes and asks if he will hiss at the visitor again. It gets scared and begins to tremble. Su Lin approaches one of the tables and says that although with her abilities she is not afraid of any cold, but in this world she is only portraying an ordinary student. People may become suspicious if she doesn't dress warmly in cold weather. Yu agrees, yes, that's right. Wouldn't she just like a little sweet today? She says she will drink a cup of black tea. Her office says that if she continues to eat like this, she will have no income. Shen Yu brings her tea and states that he has an answer to her request. Then he sits down opposite her and thinks that, fortunately for him, Christy came first. Otherwise, if Su Lin came first and he had no information, it would be a shame. She looks at him in surprise and notes that he gathered information very quickly. She remembers reading that this is a being that cannot be controlled, cannot be manipulated, and cannot be in contact with for a long time. Typically, the target uses the cafe owner's identity as a disguise, maintaining a human appearance and habits. From time to time, various attacks occur in the establishment, such as the aura of an extraterrestrial god, but there is a suspicion that he is a divine messenger of the Lord of Ash. He is conditionally friendly towards people. The object does not like to take direct action in the region, controls information faster, makes moves behind the scenes, manipulates everyone like on a chessboard, and seems to like to play with human feelings. It is worth paying attention to the fact that traders are not able to look into their past, present, and future. It is directly found in the predictor of serious mental disorder. In addition, it is worth paying attention to the condition. According to the records, this only occurs during prophecy. The subject's body can be extremely dangerous, so it is not recommended to observe it for long periods of time. The best option is to gain his trust. When no danger is foreseen, you can support his desire and play with his feelings. In Shen Yu's personal file, the number is V22. His danger level is impossible. Lin takes a sip from her cup and sees that after reading about him, it already seems to her that he is not a person at all. Lately, she often has a dream where there is silence all around, no noise and only white earth. She doesn't know if it's all connected with the seal he gave her. Shen Yu talks about the Butt family. They used some kind of invisible technique in the place where the old man's death occurred. She thanks him and replies that as an exchange of information, she informs him that she managed to find the Light Hunter. But she still doesn't know anything about the False God. Yu explains that the False God is the one the Light Hunter is chasing to kill. Su Lin frowns and notes that even the highest department of the Anti-Magic Bureau knows nothing about the Light Hunter. How did he find out about this? She then reveals that the Light Hunter is one of the ten ministers of the Coronation Church. This man's name is Flo Augustine, and he comes from an ancient family that still believes in the Coronation Church. He has also been tracking strange events lately, broadcasting a hidden pupil, but he is acting alone. He even asked them not to interfere. Shen Yu smiles and understands, this is key information he is investigating the case of the hidden pupil Lin continues to say that the Light Hunter did an investigation two days ago, but couldn't find much, and he seemed to be at a loss. This man is just too honest, he doesn't seem like the type to do an investigation. You hear this, and the problem arises. If he left people with the impression of honesty, doesn't that indicate that he is a very honest person? Su Lin performs, by the way, suddenly, in addition to the Light Hunter in Beland, who recently became a member of the Foundation, she doesn't know what they were doing, but these people were very happy about the Light Hunter. Shen Yu again remembers that this is the same fund that is used in all countries and is called the Division that Protects Historical Property. Then he answered with a smile, okay, he understood everything. In this case, she can enjoy her black tea. With cryptic words, he left and wrote down that thanks to the information he received from Su Lin, the picture began to correct itself in front of him. 
Pure miracle or white must be that very false god, or at least he is connected to him. Otherwise, Light Hunter would not have investigated the matter regarding the hidden pupil. Collective changes in the members of the hidden pupil were told to him. White is the most false god of predictions. What was he up to when he arrived in the land? He became curious. Shen Yu stands in front of the glass portal and tells Kolia that he is leaving. The cat should not break the dishes, and when he returns, he will play with it. The clock shows three hours, two minutes in the morning. He watches at the last moment and notices that he seems to have changed a lot since he came into this world. Every day he learns more about it and is now less afraid of the unknown than at the very beginning. Now he already has the strength to help others and solve his problems in this world. Three hours ago, Christy brought him two flasks with green liquid. She handed it to him and explained that it was the copy of the dream he had asked for. Shen Yu replied that this was very good. Over the next few days, she must look after a girl named Tina in Blue's company. This task will be very important. Christy immediately exclaims, good failure is unacceptable, and then she leaves and says goodbye to him. Yu notes that she is the perfect subordinate who does what she has ordered George won't show up for a couple of days. It seems that I will have to work with Su Lin. But he also needs to help Tina as quickly as possible. Currently, he is walking down a long corridor with her, and she clarifies, are they holding the ceremony right in the community? But Shen Yu says that she will simply win for him. Lin can't help but frown and think that he is a real rude guy after that. He clarifies why she stopped the Asby. But Su Lin immediately smiles and says that she is on her way. What is the number in Tina's room, and how do they get in? Or maybe he just wants to send? But white smoke appears around them, and Yu completely disappears into it. He enters the room through a crack, and then opens the door and says that she can come in. Su Lin cares for him casually. As they walked in, he told her to get everything she needed to get them started. Su Lin looks at the sleeping Tina and wonders, is she an orc? They have practically become extinct and are now found only in fairy tales and legends. Yu explains that she is wrong. This is the action of a miracle worker. All that needs to be done is to return her to her former life. He looks at Tina and looks. It seems she suddenly hears words in her head. Lin also works for him and wonders, I wonder who he is trying to find and destroy. It seems that everything is not so simple, and this time it will be a confrontation between the gods. Shen Yu shows a small flame with his finger and notes that with the help of the breath of the gods he can transfer words into Tina's head. But then he realized that he had forgotten about Su Lin again. He takes two copies out of his pocket, and this is the sentence she is invited to begin. They only have a few hours left. Lin agrees and takes one of the cones. She then tries to tell him something, but Yu leans towards her and says that she should listen to him carefully. After that he whispers very quietly and something in her ear. Su Lin's expression becomes very serious, and she replies that she understands everything. Shen Yu carefully looks forward, towards the window glass. There is a very heavy fog there. The silhouette of a very tall and thin monster in a hat is watching on the street. He holds in his hands a scythe that sparkles brightly. Instead of a face, this monster has red eyes that glow brightly. White fog enters the hotel and traps a man at the check-in desk. The monster passes through the door and advances towards the eye as it passes through the corridors. After that, he enters the room where you, Tina, and Lin are. The monster notices him and his eye completely focuses on Shen Yu. He swings his scythe and attacks sharply. But blue energy appears in Shen Yu's hand, which turns into a whip. He uses this to break the blade of the scythe. The whip becomes a cane, and he says with a grin that he was right in assuming that the miracle worker would leave a mark on Tina. Obviously, he will decide to play it safe. Yu remembers whispering in Lin's ear that he saw something sitting in the shadows. She must first turn in a dream, and she will deal with it, and then join her. Shen Yu notes that White has prepared well. He couldn't even imagine that Yu was bothering him. He tries to attack him again, but Yu puts forward his cane, with which he breaks the braid in half. He noticed that it seemed that he had come to the end. He then jumps off the bed and attacks White once more. But his wounds immediately heal and Shen Yu screams for him to stop, then he strikes again. But even after this, White's wound quickly heals. Yu smirks and says he's tired of him. At the very beginning, he asked Su Lin, a tall building away from people, so as not to wake anyone up. He wants to see how many times White can come back to life with the help of the text. A new and improved weapon appears in his hand. After a while, Shen Yu sits with his back against the wall and wearily announces that he has won. 
after he appeared with surprise aside and wondered what is this. Small rocks are scattered near White's remains. He takes one of them in his hand and warns that they are white crystals. Could this be what he is thinking about? Then he looks at the bed. Tina rises into the air and Yu shouts, What is this even Su Lin doesn't react to anything? It looks like this is all due to a trap left by the miracle worker. Shen Yu moves closer to the bed and thoughts so that he can enter the dream faster. The fact that he read the books doesn't really fit the theme of what's going on. Therefore, it needs complete protection. He sits down on the bed, lowers his head, and falls asleep. But when he opens his eyes again, he looks around and wonders, is this the world again? He stands on a gray surface. In the sky, the rays of the sun break through the dark clouds. Yu thinks he needs to find Su Lin. He must go. At this time, Lin is in the black space zone. She closes her eyes and widens her eyes. But then she suddenly wakes up and sits down on the bed. Su Lin wraps her arms around her sweater and exclaims that her clothes are still on her. Then she works aside and asks the question, where are the others? Looks like this is the first level. With the being of the word, she takes her robe and puts it on. Lin reasons that the world is once again divided into three layers. The reality level is the level that corresponds to ordinary knowledge. The fantasy level is the level that corresponds to the imagination. And the primitive layer is the level that corresponds to instinct. They say that in order to enter the classical dimension of the soul, you need to go through all three layers. She then heads to the window and jumps out of it. Su Lin flies down and notices that the miracle worker is a close associate of God. Just like Shen Yu, whom she needs to find. She needs to check his concerns first and maybe resolve things right away. If the miracle worker hides in Tina's dream, then you need to find her and then you will be nearby. It's good that she doesn't have to hide her identity and move quickly around the city. She then pulls her teeth off the robe and notices a piece of fabric she hopes will help. She throws it into the air and turns the fabric into a black paper crane. Lin explains that in reality, she and Tina hold hands. In the dream, this gives a kind of connection that will help her if she uses a paper crane. She goes out onto the road and approaches the roof of a tall building. Sun Lin suggests that reaching this level is family. A very common source is the person who makes decisions about the family. Suddenly she noticed that the paper cranes had disappeared, which meant that Tina was on another level. Lin flies up in the air, and two portals appear nearby. She flies into one of them and closes. Su Lin appears in another place where cars are driving and people in white robes are walking. She noted that this seemed to be next level. A huge gorilla and a paper crane appear behind her. Lin runs to the side, and the monster steps on a nearby building, completely crushing it under its foot. A paper crane flies out of the dust clouds, and Su Lin flies after it. She looks forward as the world around her changes shape. Then everything turns into a funnel, and ends up in a new place where the sun shines brightly. Lin looks forward and behind this happens, is this a castle and a princess? Suddenly a small horse noticed her. She frowns and sees this and clarifies, is this a horse? But when it flies closer to her, it turns into a dragon with horns. Su Lin shouts in bewilderment, what kind of hellish picture is this? She runs into the forest and exclaims that the crane has flown very far, the forest borders the sea, and Lin comes ashore. She noted that the result of imagination was Tina's childish heart. It looks like she listened well to time as a child. Much better than her. Su Lin saw the paper crane floating on the water and noticed that it seemed to be the entrance to the last level. She must hurry. With a significant word, she goes into the water and dives. The surface of the water darkens, and Lin is transported to a new place. Red lightning flashes around her as she stands on the uneven surface of the roof. Then she sees Tina and mentally exclaims that she has found her suddenly from behind. She saw a man with blonde hair and in a long dress. He says that he is very pleased to meet Su Lin. She shouldn't be surprised. He's a miracle worker. He knows everything, including her. Lin turns around and clarifies with a smile the powers of the prophecy. But he cannot predict the action of a person who is stronger than him. For example, what's outside? The miracle worker frowns and is about to clench his hand into fists. A sword appeared in her hands and she tried to attack the miracle worker. But he snaps his finger and casts a spell, destroying the hand. Lin's hands explode and he adds unbearable pain. Su Lin falls to the ground and holds the sword in his teeth. She screams at him to move back the miracle worker, spreads his arms to the sides, and notes that it is useless. His power is omnipotent, he can work miracles. 
She throws the sword on the ground and says it's over. If she is killed here, then this will happen in reality. The miracle worker grins and agrees, this is so. And her consciousness and body perished. He doesn't kill her on purpose because he wants genuine submission. Her will is strong, but how much longer can she hold on? He then shows her that she is in pain and repeats it several times. Lin immediately throws her head up and screams in unbearable pain. Her pupils turn white, and the miracle worker shows her the servant with a snap of his finger. But Su Lin clenches her teeth tightly and says that she will not do this. He grins and says, of course. Can she still bear it? In that case, he can continue. They found themselves in a different place on a flat gray surface. He frowns and exclaims, then they will start first. He silently snaps his finger and realizes that the pain is going away. It's all because of him. She suddenly opens her eyes. The miracle worker frowns and looks to the side. Behind them stands Shen Yu in a suit and mask. Su Lin falls to the ground, and he wonders with the girl on top of her, what did the miracle worker do to her he was almost late? Yu clenches his fists, and a white mist begins to appear from behind. A man sees this and understands that this is a divine aura, then he begins to dissolve, and Shen Yu confidently thinks that he is definitely not his rival, he must get ready now, but the miracle worker snaps his fingers and orders him to wake up suddenly. Glass breaks in the dream world and illuminates everything with white light. Lin, you and Tina are in the hotel room. Tina opens her eyes and looks at Shen Yu, asking when did this witch come. Then she turned towards Su Lin and said, They are the same age then, why are they so different? But then she suddenly becomes embarrassed and exclaims, This can't be how can she reconcile with nature, she won't be able to accept this Tina covers her face with her hands, but Yu covers her eyes. She immediately punched him and asked how could he do this. He asks in bewilderment what he did but she points her finger at him and continues to shout, what did he want to do with them? He was going to do such a disgusting thing. Shen Yu abruptly tells her to calm down, he's only here to exercise the demon. Su Lin, his assistant, they came together to help her. If she doesn't believe him, then she can just look in the mirror. Now she is an ordinary person. Tina feels her head and Yu looks relieved, it's good that Lin hasn't woken up yet, at least she didn't see how his status as God's messenger will be destroyed. Tina exclaims that she believes him. He gets up from the floor and brushes himself off, responding perfectly. She thanks him, and he, sitting on the bed, again answers, okay. Yu looks at Su Lin and sees that when he saw her in his dream, she seemed very depressed. He defeated the miracle worker, and everything had to return to its place. Suddenly Lin opens her eyes, and he joyfully announces that she has finally woken up. How is her condition? But she just looks up and Yu asks what's wrong with her. Tina also comes up to her and asks what happened to her. He explains that Su Lin was injured by an evil demon and needs time to recover. Can she stay with her? Tina answers excitedly, of course. The nightlight is on in the room and Shen Yu thinks, although they solved Tina's problem, they missed the miracle worker and Su Lin in a deplorable state. Suddenly someone's voice is heard and unintelligible speech is heard. Yu looks up and wonders if this is a call, although it's not very similar. The sounds continue, but he cannot understand it. Shen Yu suggests that this sound comes from the heart. It's very similar to hearing Lin's voice in a dream. The voices continue to be heard, and he looks to the side, indicating that they have disappeared. Tina asks in fear, are you poisoned? Why does the teacher suddenly look away? Is there something she doesn't see? But he calms her down and says that everything is fine. But then Yu sighs and thinks that this is definitely not a call. He really doesn't want to leave them here, in the same state Su Lin leaves much to be desired. Although, if his suspicion is correct, then perhaps the call is made not to restrict Beland. Shen Yu uses Willard's soul ball and learns that the history of the Third Continent is short. Most people's ancestors were once on the Norlanders. Due to historical reasons, strangers arrived in their land. Then it was the basis of a new nation. At that time, there was a war with the Ermin in Norland. They eventually had to survive the victory of independence. He stands by the bed and notes that this time there was only a sound similar to a call. But in the end, it was not required. Maybe it wasn't a call. Sounds like a responsible responsibility. In the dream world, he also heard something. But this voice was similar to Su Lin. Maybe this is a press event. He must see this. But if he undresses her, he may misunderstand. It would be better if he tried to wake up Lin. He then leans towards her and calls Su Lin. Can she hear him? But no process comes from her. And then Yu suggested that she give her a 50% discount on his vegetables. 
Su Lin is still lying with her eyes closed, and Yu assumes that there is probably nothing wrong with her, she just needs a stronger stimulus. He smiles and tells Lin that she must understand he can't make any more discount. He can't just buy her coffee if she's just pretending. Tina notes with a pitiful expression that Su Lin doesn't look healthy. Maybe she's his doll. He closed his eyes and replied that it would be great if she were his doll. He could have just shown her. Then he points at Lin with a pencil and exclaims for the gourmand to get up now. Lin immediately rises from the bed, and he wonders when did he gain the power to control people. This didn't happen before. Exactly, he must use the breath of the outer god. This should help her. Yu creates a flame in his palm, first Su Lin's body, and then her head begins to tremble. She frowns sharply and looks at him. Shen Yu looks at her with tired eyes and explains that this time he came to save her. She doesn't answer, but the trouble is asked, is she here? Lin remembers Yu in the dream world and frighteningly exclaims that the quiet singer came in a dream. Shen Yu hears this and asks what is wrong. Su Lin looks down with frightened eyes and sees that he destroyed the quiet knight in Belandon. Who is he? He can use various divine moves, and he was even able to summon a silent singer. She could not do anything to the miracle worker. But this man was able to deal with it easily. Yu comes closer and asks if everything is okay with her. He woke her up. Can he go now? But Lin looks at him menacingly and mentally exclaims, Not yet. She then reaches across the bed for her sword and remembers that her things are located on the edge. Shen Yu added that he wanted to reward her. Lin takes the sword and waits for a reward. Yu looks at her back and asks what she is doing. She explains that it's a little cold here. She wants to get dressed. Then she stands in a robe and notes that it is very nice to realize that you can teach the same thing to different people and always benefit from it. It was Shen Yu who taught her magic summoning. She frowns and doesn't understand why Yu is looking at her like that. This is the highest form of the invisible word of silence in the priesthood, which is not always passed on even by inheritance. And he taught her this so easily. Tina watches her, but looks inattentively. She hears every word, but cannot understand anything from it. She is sure that this is something that is connected with God. Then she approaches Shen Yu and asks the master to teach her how to use the power of a god to Yu grins and notes that she believed it. He turns to Tina and answers, of course. It just needs to happen. She clarifies with surprise, does she pay? Then she sheepishly added what she needed to happen. But Shen Yu shouts irritably that she shouldn't even dare think about it. She should become his student. She will be able to learn it at the same time. As his student, she will work in his garden all day. In his free time, he will teach her. Tina asks with disappointment, what's up? What about the test? Don't they have to sign a magical contract? Shen Yu puts her palm to her face and says that she clearly read the wrong books. But she is already glowing, so it's time for her to leave. Tina briefly answers, okay, then she bows and Yu adds that he will be waiting for her in two days. She also has to get dressed before going out. She realizes that she is wearing just a shirt and exclaims that he almost left just like that Shen Yu was observed by Su Lin and noticed that just an hour ago he was frightening and intimidating. But now he looks normal again. He's just like a good friend. Yu turns to her and asks with a smile if she would like a cup of coffee. But she frowns and looks away and exclaims, No, it's time for her to go Lin leaves and Shen Yu wonders what happened to her. Two days later, he sits in a cafe and reads the news. The campaign speech for the new mayor of Beland has already begun. The candidate with the highest level of support this time is also the most senior. The next candidate is 30 years old. Tina is behind the bar and states that she has cleaned everything up. He asks if she wants him to be the manager. She exclaims with a smile, of course you also smiles and closes his eyes. Everything is arranged very well. There is nothing wrong with keeping his student busy. Suddenly the cafe door opens and Aina enters. She asks in surprise if anyone is here. 